Welcome to Pratidwani, where we try to humanize science. I am delighted to have uh, Atikur Rehman as my guest today on uh, this particular episode. Atikur is an associate professor at the Department of Physics at the Indian Institute of Science, Education and Research. Atikur is a, an excellent experimentalist with very deep knowledge in uh, quantum condensed matter physics and also materials aspect of uh, quantum systems. And uh, he has been working for several years on quantum transport and nanoelectronic devices and applications to uh, low dimensional systems like uh, quasi one dimensional and 2D materials, etc. Atikur did his PhD uh, in electronic transport properties at the very famous uh, Saha Institute of Nuclear Physics in Kolkata. And uh, his specialty during that PhD time was on nanowires. And uh, he did some very interesting work in that particular stage. Subsequently, he was a postdoctoral uh, fellow at Johns Hopkins uh, University, where he was a research associate uh, subsequently at the Center for Functional Nanomaterials in uh, Brookhaven National Lab. And he did some outstanding uh, research uh, during that particular time, uh, which led to several breakthrough kind of uh, uh, publications and also applications. Uh, that's important. And uh, in 2016, he joined the physics department at ISAC Pune. And his research interests are varied quantum transport in nanomaterials, fundamentals and applications. And he's also deeply interested in utilizing quantum materials for various different applications, be it in quantum uh, kind of technologies or also in several other applications as we will uh, discuss uh, further. So with this uh, introduction, I am delighted to welcome uh, Atikur. Welcome to, to Pratidwani Atikur. Thank you, Paman, for inviting me and uh, such a, you know, elaborate, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, introduction. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, yeah, I'm a kind of regular listener of Pratidhani. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, uh, you know, uh, great that today uh, I'm the speaker. Yes, okay. yes. I'll are. share my experience. Uh, so before we start, I'll uh, get to a specific point of uh, asking you about uh, how did you become a researcher, what you are, uh, especially give us a notion of uh, your biographical kind of uh, background. Uh, where, where were you born and uh, what was your kind of early exposure to uh, education and etc. Yeah. yeah, so I'm from a uh, small village in West Bengal. Okay, uh, my district is Murshidabad and my village is uh, Lalgola. Nice. Uh, so a lot of people know Lalgola who are in West Bengal because it's a terminal station in CL Lalgola station. That is the last uh. stoppage. So we get the advantage of, you know, choose the train seats properly. <laughs> okay. um, so, yeah, uh, though it's a small place, but you get all the advantages that you need. I mean, you have almost everything. We have a nice, you know, school uh, and other uh, you know, necessary things. Now there's a college and mm. other things as well. Okay. Uh, that, Communication is uh, kind of, uh, though there is a train line, but that's a little bit tricky. You know, mm. it's uh, not that fast. So, though the distance is slightly more than 200 kilometers from Calcutta, but earlier it used to take eight hours to reach there. Oh, now wow. the time has reduced uh, because of some super fast train. Mm. Okay, now we can go uh, theoretically in four hours. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, that place is, you know, uh, nice because where the train station ends, uh, there used to be a river which is uh, now kind of, you know, uh, dead uh, because there is a road built in one side of it. But earlier there used to be a river and uh, on the other side, it's uh, nothing is there. It's basically uh, there is empty land and maybe after uh, 10 or few kilometers, there is Bangladesh border. Wow, okay. okay. Yeah, okay. so it's very close to uh, Bangladesh border. Mm -hmm. So it's completely green over there. Okay, mm -hmm. there is uh, no habitat in that side. Uh, so we always used to take a walk in the evening time, uh, you know, river one. So it was, uh, you know, kind of a completely green, you know, full of green in a village setting, nice. which we enjoyed a lot. We grew up uh, kind of care of nature. Yes, okay. yes. Uh, so uh, when we are kid, you know, we uh, explored more uh, nature rather than you know uh, what is there in the syllabus. 
Fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, frankly speaking, I was not uh, a very attentive student till the class nine or even mid class nine. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, I mean, uh, education was never a very interesting thing for me. Uh -huh. Okay. Rather, we used to roam around, go everywhere. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, as both parents were working, so we used to get a lot of free time. <laughs> okay. Where no one is watching us. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, and we used to explore uh, all sorts of things. Uh, so when, but yeah, we, we had this uh, mind to explore things mm -hmm. and that probably, you uh, know, uh, led us here. Okay, nice. finally. Very nice. Very nice. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I, I can remember that uh, when as a small kid, I mean, I was in a primary student, mm -hmm. uh, at that time, we used to go for hunting. Hunting means wow. with a slingshot or bow and arrow. Uh, we, we enjoyed all those kind of things. Whatever you can think that a kid can do, no. we, we did all sorts of things. Uh, and uh, I had a group of my uh, you know, kind of company who are almost half of my age. So I was kind of a leader of that. <laughs> and yeah. I enjoyed it till class nine. <laughs> uh, uh, so, yeah, I mean... Um, it was a, a very interesting settings and uh, sometimes when I uh, talk to my friends these days, then they say that, oh, they didn't enjoy that much when they are a uh, kid or yeah. when they're young, they should have done that. Okay. But uh, when I look at myself, then I have no regret. Yeah. I think whatever you can do at a young age, I did everything. <laughs> uh, so, so that was, uh, I, I think, you know, helped us in... Uh, uh growing our mind properly Wonderful. okay uh, that, that is very important so that uh, you can do things uh, later on your own okay. you can take risks okay yeah. uh, because no one is there to watch us so we have <laughs> to be careful or we have to solve our own problem okay when you are playing outside or you know it may be a fight between two groups yes. okay <laughs> it can be also like that uh, no, I, I was a bit naughty, not extremely naughty, but I was a bit naughty, you know, uh, I, I, I did all sorts of things. So, at one point, there used to be a you know, complaint almost every evening and okay, against me, someone will come and complain <laughs> that okay, I did that, I, you know, broke this thing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, all those things were there. So, uh, this is also very interesting because uh, this is such an important part of uh, growing up. Yes. Right? Yeah. And, uh, you know, this is also sometimes missing in current time, right? Because somehow that outdoor activity for uh, children or anybody, in fact, that yeah. matter, is somehow reducing a lot. And uh, especially in India, the kind of space at, in which you can freely, you know, play, express. Uh, fortunately, we are in a, in a campus yeah, where yeah. there is, that's, uh, that's true. not an issue. But uh, that probably had a very deep impact, I think, on you. Yeah, that's definitely. I mean, when I look at my kids, I mean, I yeah. just say yeah. that there is a kind of story to them. It's yeah, very, sure. For them, it's very, you know, hard <laughs> to, uh, <laughs> you know, apprehend that, yes, it was happening at that time. Yeah, we went to, you know, see the bird nest. We took the eggs from the bird nest. Okay. We, uh, you know, uh, catch crabs by putting hands on the holes, which even if you tell today that nothing is there, I, I won't be able to put my hands inside those you know, holes. Okay. Yeah, uh, we played barefoot without, you know, caring that there might be, you know, some sharp thing. Okay. We, feet can get cut. Okay. Fantastic. We, we never, and so I sometimes tell uh, my kids that when they are trying to learn swimming, I said, okay, I don't know when I learned swimming because it was such an early age. Okay. I remember that I used to go to the pond with my Elder brother, so oh. I have elder brother. Uh -huh. He's also, you know, physics uh, background. He's wow, a physics teacher. Fantastic. Uh, so uh, I remember that it was very early age. Maybe I was in class two or three when I learned swimming. He just took me and put me a little bit deeper, you know, uh, water and oh, told me that okay, now come. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> That's how we learn. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I mean, we truly kind of you know grew up in the care of uh, nature That's and. Right. Uh, I, I I think uh, no I, I don't have any uh, kind of I don't think that I missed anything, anything. okay in Very that nice. age which uh, one should get okay 
somehow there is a you know uh, feeling of satisfaction that okay i did those things okay mm -hmm. um because when i see my kids uh, they are missing a lot yeah. okay yeah, um there is so much pressure these yeah. days okay uh, outdoor activities is very limited mm -hmm. yeah fortunately at isar we have something yes but uh, if you are you know now staying in a city it's very difficult, difficult okay. to, absolutely um, even the number of parks are decreasing like anything absolutely okay absolutely. Uh, which is you know one should realize that it's very important, important. okay absolutely. Uh, for a healthy society absolutely. okay uh, i i think that is one probably big reason why these days we hear a lot about mental health issues yes, yes. because yeah you are not really growing in the way you should, you should. You should. Okay. because you are absolutely right because there is an evolutionary reason why uh, uh, why people also have very positive effects uh, in living in a place where they are exposed to natural environment yeah. and uh, of course there might be more authentic research on this but uh, you know even if you want to relax after working for a long time a short walk uh, in, in a yeah. place where which has reasonable green yes really relaxes in fact anybody who would want to do that can do it right it's something which is uh, which really brings in kind of a refreshment of mind immediately yes that sense. i mean it uh, helps your eyes also yes you know. exactly eyes no no precisely your eyes yeah yeah true true because especially if you work in optics lab in a dark yeah, room exactly <laughs> i mean you want to see some green <laughs> yeah exactly yeah no that, that is you know uh, that is something uh, you know i still cherish that okay i spent my childhood like that okay. fantastic, fantastic. Uh, but yes we had this you know uh, curiosity that mm -hmm. is always there whether it is uh, you know searching for bird nest or whatever is that uh, we had the curiosity uh, and uh, that led to many problems when i was a kid uh, okay <laughs> so uh, you know as i told you that both parents are working so i used to come from uh, you know school early yes. okay i had enough time to try things yeah. And uh, I remember that, I mean, I made many, you know, kind of uh, committed many accidents, at, uh, <laughs> okay. you know, so the first thing I remember, it was, uh, I was very, you know, uh, small at that time. So we had this uh, acid that we use for bathroom okay. cleaning yes. because the water quality yeah. is very bad. So yeah. we need acid to yeah, yeah. the You're, stain. Yeah. I think it's muriatic acid yes. or something yes. like that. Okay, uh, so somehow I was trying to do something. I thought, okay, let's. What happens if I mix this acid with this thing? Okay, I forgot the other, you know, material. What was it? Whether it is some oil or some soap water or whatever yeah. is that? That I forgot. Okay, but I remember that it was a brass bowl that I used, and uh, I was working on the, you know, newly made floor. Mm -hmm. Okay, which is red in color. So that time we didn't have this marble or you yeah. know, mosaic. Right. It's just the uh, cement, cement with red, you know. Uh, color mixed uh, uh, i mean the polish is really yeah. good it's very shiny uh, and then i put the bowl and pour some uh, I, I forgot the other liquid but the acid was there i put the acid the moment i put the acid it starts like <laughs> boiling up anything and it's spilled, spilled everywhere up. and it made a nice map of like australia on the floor <laughs> and it removed this uh, red you know uh, color color okay yeah. now it become very rough and I was terrified that I cannot hide this thing. This is in the middle of the floor. Yes, okay. Yes. So I don't know what I am going to face when my parents will become. I try to, you know, uh, fix it, but it was impossible. Okay. It's a cement floor. Uh, I will still have that mark. <laughs> so <laughs> how much I could. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I got you know quite a bit of uh, scolding, and uh, you know they said that oh, we should not play with the acids and other things, but. It's not that you know they stop me from trying those things completely. Okay, uh, so yeah, thanks to my parents that they also you know kind of uh, sometimes encourage to try something yeah, in a safer, safer way. way. Nice, okay, nice. that's the thing. It's not that okay I committed something there is some accident that's why they say oh, never try this thing. Okay, never play like this. Okay, they never said that. Exactly. Okay, they just said that okay we should be careful. This is acid. You should not try those things. Uh, yeah, uh, another time I uh, I somehow heard about rechargeable batteries. Ah, okay. <laughs> so I thought that okay, rechargeable batteries. Then uh, I read something somewhere, but it was you know half education. <laughs> uh, so the information was not complete, and I couldn't uh, apprehend everything. Uh, then I thought that okay, if I connect it to the electric uh, you know wire, right. you know, and then the battery will be charged again. Okay. 
So I took a battery and I made a you know kind of connection <coughs> for 232 volts. Okay, directly with the line. Okay, that is available in the uh, room. Uh, fortunately, before turning it on, my mother saw it and is she scolded like <laughs> anything. And I didn't try that. Probably it is just going to explode the battery because it's not a rechargeable battery. It's just a regular battery yeah. that we use. Yes. Okay, so these are uh, kind of something that again I would say curiosity driven thing that we try. Okay, let's see what happens. Okay. Uh, then, then I went to another guy who has some technical knowledge. Right. So he used to work in a they said repairing shop, television and radio repairing shop. So he told me like how these rechargeable right. batteries, how they are different, and these are not like the regular batteries. And the charger circuit is different. Right. You need a different voltage. So I didn't understand everything, but I get that idea like, okay, there is something, okay, that is different from this regular batteries. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so these are something that we tried and we failed. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the time we yes, failed. Yes, okay. Yes. Uh, but we keep trying right. to do things. But the first time that was kind of a success. Okay. And uh, that still I remember and I was very excited. I still, you know, remember vividly. Mm -hmm. Uh, so again, I read somewhere that uh, you can uh, do, you know, just test electrolysis mm. say, using a salt water. Mm. Uh, so we didn't have beaker or anything access to that. But those days you have this uh, filament uh, bulb. Okay. Uh, and we somehow knew how to, uh, that we learned for a different purpose. Okay. So we, we need to know how to open those bulbs, how to break the filament and use the outer oh, cell of that bulb. Wow. Okay, so it's basically now a glass vessel. Glass vessel. We actually use it for small aquarium. We used yes. to put the small yes. you know, fish into that. And uh, as it's in a round shape, so the fish when it went in the back side, it looked very big. big. Okay, yeah. uh, so that was nice. So that was my kind of, you uh, know, beaker or testy, whatever you can say. So, but you, you, you remove the lower part of the bulb. Like the yeah, it's the top part, uh -huh. okay, which is, you know, uh, there is a kind of hook which you put and yeah. so we learn how to remove that thing and right. make it through. So through, through. Right. Uh, we learn how to break it, it will make a hiss sound when uh -huh. you just break it because there is vacuum. <laughs> vacuum. Yeah, yes, yes. Uh, and then we can nicely, you know, kind of make it a, a smooth uh, kind of hole. hole. Yes, okay. yes, yes. Uh, we, we have to be careful that we should not cut our cut finger down. because yeah. uh, it's yeah. glass. But yeah, I mean, we got some success on that. Fantastic. Uh, but that we learned in a different context. <laughs> uh, then I used it and uh, those days we used this uh, battery. Yeah. Okay, it's not like the battery that we are using uh, present. Is. I, I remember the brand, it's the, the Jeep battery that we used mm -hmm. okay, because we had, you know, torch light because uh, we often had load setting. So mm -hmm. those are kind of yeah, uh, yeah. necessary things. Absolutely. Uh, and also we used to have a radio, which mm -hmm. is battery operated, you know, um, television came at a very later stage in our place. Nice. Uh, so uh, those batteries, when they're old, it's basically a paper wrapped battery. Mm -hmm. Outside is paper. And if you remove that paper, then you see the zinc mm -hmm. okay, uh, cam kind of thing. And then there is a carbon rod at the middle. Nice. So, uh, in the, that information that I got, that we need uh, two uh, connection, two basically electrode. Okay, I, I don't remember what it was written at the time because uh, it was in Bengali medium. Uh, uh, okay. okay, so something it was you know. So basically, you need electrode, but that should be made of zinc, uh -huh. and one should be of copper. Nice. Okay. So copper we got easily. I mean, I asked my father to get a copper wire from the market. So I mean, uh, he you know brought those things, and I knew that the outer side of the battery, if you remove the paper, then that is the zinc. Yeah. Okay, so I just you know get some old battery and you know took out the zinc from it, just cut it. Okay, it was not a, <coughs> a very safe way. It's always you know kind of toxic all the chemicals, but we didn't have that much idea how toxic those things are. Nice. Okay. So I removed those, you know, one zinc and one copper and I put it inside that, you know, uh, now glass vessel, okay, this bulb uh, and put some salt water into it and yes. add a battery. And the moment I connect the battery, I saw that the bubbles have come. Wow. And that wow. made me very happy. Okay, <laughs> something is happening. Okay, it's kind of feel like, okay, I kind of, I'm doing something. Okay, uh, there is something really. And uh, I was so happy that I took it with me to show all my friends that look, 
you know this kind of magic you see this I, the moment i connect the bats the bubbles are coming out of this you know salt water so that was again i had no idea that what science is there behind all these bubbles are coming but you know uh, i always like to build things mm. to make things okay that is still there that's still okay. there exactly. yes. yeah yeah Uh, so th that was something I think was I made successfully yeah, okay yeah. Uh, for the uh, first time. So we grew up in this fashion. Mm. Education was never uh, kind of you know first priority to me, mm. and sometimes my father used to get upset mm. uh, looking at my attitude. So we used to scold me sometimes that what you will do when you grow up? Are you going to be a rickshaw puller or something? <laughs> Then I used to say, okay, what is so bad about rickshaw puller? He has his own vehicle. Good <laughs> one. <Okay. laughs> so you know, uh, I realized that at a very later mm -hmm. stage that uh, you know uh, this uh, studying is very important. I need yes. to study. Okay, and that I learned that transition also happened. It's kind of very abrupt. Okay, mm -hmm. that's uh, like when I I I don't know why how that happened. Probably it's just of the because of the age and mm -hmm. change of hormone and yeah. whatever is that. Okay, when I was in the mid ninth grade. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, that time one day I realized that okay, this tenth board exam is coming. Mm -hmm. Okay, in Bengal we call it Madhyamik. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so the board exam is coming. That is something very important. Okay, for the first time I realized that the exams are very important. <laughs> no, <laughs> okay. Uh, so and then it's kind of abrupt change. change. So uh, I kind of stop going outside almost. You know mm -hmm. uh, that is probably another bad side of the education. Yeah. <laughs> okay, this pressure yeah. uh, that I completely stop going outside. Yeah. So all my like gang members who are almost half of my age, they used to come and say, "Why he is not coming outside? Exactly. Okay, why he is not playing?" Okay, then I told them, "Okay, I have exams. Okay, which is coming." Mm -hmm. uh, in next one and a half year, it is coming. <laughs> so I have to be careful. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. Next one and a half year. Yes, <laughs> because I was in the mid of uh, ninth grade, yeah. and uh, <laughs> uh, so then uh, you know, kind of uh, we became what you say, maybe bookworm or whatever is that. So there is a transition, but. Uh, I always had this mind. Okay, once this exam is over, I am going to build this, this, this. Yes. Okay, there is a long list yes, of things that I am going to build. This, I am going to build that. Um, but yeah, I mean, so the earlier days, the things that we try to build uh, was, you know, uh, may not be very interesting. Mm -hmm. It was suitable for that age. But when I grow up, maybe in the sixth grade or seventh grade, uh, then somehow this, you know. Uh, Electrical things attracted mm. me, you know, uh, very much. Okay, I had this uh, small bulb. Those are not mm. LEDs. Those mm. days you don't get LEDs, but those are small. We used to call them tuny bulb. Okay, that you generally see, you know, uh, for any occasion mm. people used to, you know, uh, kind of uh, for the decoration purpose they use those kind of bulbs. Okay, so I fortunately, you know, grabbed some of them and uh, made some circuit, just you know, light them, mm -hmm. do some on-off kind of thing. That you know, someone attracted me a lot. So uh, right now I am working in electronic transport, yes, but that you know, yes. affinity to electricity, how you know, uh, it somehow it was there. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, but yeah, from uh, like mid ninth grade. Mm -hmm. uh, the conventional education started actually. <laughs> okay, uh, so I had to kind of suppress my curiosity for the sake of uh, you know whatever getting marks or doing well in the exams. Okay, that is a shame, isn't it? It's uh, the same, yeah, because we couldn't uh, you know somehow our education system uh, doesn't support okay, curiosity, yeah. and these days it's even uh, terrible. Okay, it's even uh, you're it's absolutely right. So uh, I think now. Now that you have such a strong anchoring in uh, kind of you know thinking uh, through hands, because that is something which is very important part of uh, experimentalist, and this is uh, usually the case for a lot of people who yeah. have turned out to be experimentalists, including myself. Yes, uh, yes. and of of course there are also other people whom I have spoken to, they have very similar experience. Uh, it is also very interesting that uh, experimentalists, uh, especially in experimental physics. You generally also are exposed to mathematics. Mathematics, yeah. in the sense, yes. Uh, I've also observed, including uh, my own case, 
there is a strong interest in mathematics in a slightly different way especially mm-hmm. for example mm-hmm. growing up i had a very strong inclination towards geometry mm-hmm. even now even when i was i see some puzzle in geometrical kind of uh, a puzzle or something uh, like martin gardner or somebody it's so fascinating mm-hmm. was there also some exposure which you had because i i know that having interacted with you and by the way to listeners i should mention Atikur is my favorite collaborator. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, we are a very successful <laughs> collaborator. Yeah. I have had fantastic uh, research collaborations thanks to the, our uh, group members. Yeah, our group members. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, I'll come to those points like uh, you know uh, how I landed in uh, uh, ISR Pune and uh, yeah, we'll how we are doing. Yeah, we'll come to that point and then I will <laughs> elaborate little about my collaborator. Pawan Kumar is my collaborator. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. it's been fantastic. Yeah. So, Tell me yeah, about a little bit about yeah, your experience. Yeah, so that's uh, okay. Yeah, so far whatever I you know um, told you about uh, that is outside school mm-hmm. or uh, you know outside the textbook thing. But yes, I mean uh, I was not a bad student. Okay, uh, even though I was not very interested in uh, studies, but I did well in the exams yeah, of, yeah. most of the time. Well, okay, uh, I, I remember once I did really bad. That was uh, when I had to get admission in the fifth grade. <laughs> Okay, uh, I narrowly got chance yeah, there because I did some silly mistake. Okay, but yeah, uh, you said about this mathematics, and I think uh, it is inherent. Okay, mm-hmm. uh, so I, I probably got it from my mother. I mean, she is good in uh, mathematics. Though both my parents are from arts background, mm-hmm. but my mother was good in mathematics, and uh, I uh, remember that uh, when I was in fourth grade. Okay, uh, she uh, she used to give uh, you know tuition at the time to the uh, school uh, uh, you know uh, students. I mean her own student. Uh, that yeah, time uh, tuition was not banned yeah. okay, <laughs> by the you know school teacher. Both my parents are teacher on the same oh, school. Nice. So my brother is also and uh, my sister in law is also teacher on the same school. Wow! So, so it's, it's kind, kind of, of yeah. It's a, we are kind of teacher in fourth generation probably oh, now. Amazing! Yeah, amazing. Uh, and from both sides, both my parents' side. Oh. I mean, uh, my mother's father is also teacher. My father's father is also teacher. Fantastic. Okay. Fantastic. Uh, uh, so uh, anyway, uh, so she was teaching. I think uh, fifth grade or sixth grade students, and I was in either third or fourth grade. Uh, so they are, uh, you know, discussing about some uh, mathematical problem, mm. uh, and it's I, I don't remember the problem, uh, you know, uh, completely. But it was about you know a moving train and it's crossing something, and then you find out the speed or whatever something like that. Okay, uh, it's purely you know arithmetic uh, problem. Then somehow, uh, I mean, I was overhearing. I was playing. I was doing something, building some. You know, uh, I think I was building a crane kind of stuff at that mm. time. Okay, but hearing that, you know, uh, my mother was kind of trying to make the other student understand. Okay, whether they can do it or not, and they seem a bit, uh, you know, upset. They cannot do it. But somehow, I said that, oh, I can do it. Okay. Nice. My mother got a little bit surprised. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, you cannot. How okay. Come, how come you okay. have so much? Yeah. How come you can, you can do it? Then I said, no, I can do it. Okay. I somehow, you know, uh, realized that, oh, it's doable. Oh. Okay. I got the clue that oh. how one should attack this, mm. you know, mm. uh, mathematical problem. Mm. Uh, then my mother put a challenge that, okay, if you can do it, I'll give you a fountain pen. Wilson pen was that oh, the time yes. was very, you know, I was fascinated about mm. Wilson pen. Okay. Then she said, if you can do it, I'll give you a Wilson pen. Okay. Then I said, okay, fine, I'll do it. And I remember they took a you know peach board, which was kind of uh, probably we bought some T-shirt, mm. and it used to be there in the back side of the T-shirt, you know, for packing. So I started doing that math in that peach board, nice, nice, nice. and I end up doing, and I was successful in uh, you know getting that yeah. answer. So yeah, I like mathematics. Uh, actually, my uh, you know when I came to Saha Institute, I'll come to that yeah. point you know later. My first paper was in theory. And, oh, and that was, you know, kind of uh, mostly mathematics driven. I mean, I, I like this, you know, to solve problems. Solve problems. Okay. Yes. It's basically solving problems. Exactly. I never took it as mathematics. It's just, okay, it's another problem. Okay. Precisely right. You know, yeah. I, I want to pause at this particular point. Because, see, there is generally a notion of, uh, of uh, educating people uh, in mathematics. Yeah. Where sometimes it gets kind of a little bit more mechanical. And a yeah. lot of children... Uh, generally tend to go away 
because mm -hmm. they don't see the context or the relevance of uh, using a particular mathematics. Yeah, yeah. In fact, this approach of looking at, let's say, a physical world mm -hmm. and then trying to solve that particular problem in which mathematics becomes a part of this kind of uh, machinery to solve it. Yes. And yeah, that's yeah. a very important, effective way of uh, learning mathematics. A lot of engineering people do that. Right? Yes, exactly. yes. Yeah, that's exactly. exactly what exactly. Uh, engineer, engineers may do it. Yeah. yeah, yeah the, 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 see, the problem uh, in the school education is that, you know, you enforce them your own way of understanding things. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you gave a problem and let them think. Exactly. Okay. Uh, let them explore that thing. Okay. Because solving a mathematical problem, I don't think there is only one way exactly. to solve it. Exactly. Okay. Precisely. There are various ways. People will be thinking in a completely different way. Okay. So, I, I think again that, you know, is related to creativity or uh, the freedom of thinking. I mean, you should allow them to think. Okay, these days we don't allow. Absolutely. Okay, we have the. Okay, you should solve this thing in this way. That's the. You know, we teach them technique. Okay, not, not the, uh, actual, actual mathematics. Okay. Uh, so anyway, uh, so I, I think I had uh, you know kind of uh, good uh, knack in mathematics, mm -hmm. but. Uh, yeah, at the same point, you know, sometimes I was very reluctant mm -hmm. uh, to do things very carefully because most of the time, you know, uh, I can do some uh, silly mistakes. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. it's written eight. I probably copy it as zero. Okay, those kind of mistakes yes. I often used to do. So I was a bit restless mm -hmm. those days. Okay, because there are so many things outside happening. Okay, that is so attractive to me. Yeah. You know, uh, concentrating on pen and paper sometimes is very difficult. Very difficult. Uh, yeah. And uh, I, I remember that I did really bad in the you know entrance test in fifth grade because uh, from class one to four I studied mm -hmm. on a primary school and uh, yeah here there is another interesting thing I should mention which sound like you know uh, uh, not very convincing these days uh, the school that I studied we didn't have any classroom for the you know kindergarten mm -hmm. basically we call it infant grade yes okay yes. Uh, we literally did it. Uh, Below a mango tree. Mango tree yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, then from the second grade, uh, we got the kind of said. Okay, we didn't have any uh, bench table or anything. The only bench was there in uh, fourth grade. Nice. Okay, where you can get only for sitting. All the books you have to hold in your hand. Okay, so there is no desk. There is no concept of desk. But uh, from fifth. To 12th, I started in Lalu Laman Academy, mm. which uh, whenever I go, I kind of visit yes, my yes, school. Yes. Okay. I think recently you were, you were there? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I was there also yeah. recently. Yeah. And uh, I mean, um, so this time I, uh, every time I go, I try to at least motivate the student. Nice. This time I went to a different place, but nice. uh, next time probably I'll again, you know, give a talk in my uh, that school. But anyway, I try to uh, visit those schools. So my fifth to twelfth grade on the same school. So during the entrance test of the fifth grade, okay, I did really bad in mathematics. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, I somehow got admission because of uh, you know some mm. literature, so Bengali basically. So we used to give two exams. One is for Bengali and one is for mathematics. Mm. <laughs> okay. Uh, but anyway, uh, that was kind of a blow to me that I did really bad in the mathematics. So then the uh, I kind of learned my lesson. Mm. Uh, then after that, you know, immediately in fifth, uh, there are like uh, we used to have two exams, only two terms. So there. Okay, half yearly and then and yeah, final yeah. exam. So I did really well. I got full marks in both the exams. So I kind of, you know, again uh, back into my track. <laughs> okay, I have to be a little bit, you know, sincere on that. Uh, but yes, uh, mathematics was always uh, kind of you know a big interest to me and. Uh, I remember that uh, in uh, seventh grade we came to this, you know, geometry thing which mm. you are saying, and uh, that was something was very interesting, interesting. to me as well. And uh, I somehow could do it well at mm. the time because I, I could easily realize that when uh, you know a teacher they taught those things, okay, a lot of students they have difficulty in understanding the mm. like. It's like a logical thing. Exactly. Okay. That's a purely logical thing. There is uh, nothing to memorize. Memorize. Exactly. There is uh, nothing to memorize. Nothing to memorize. Yeah. And where you don't have to memorize, uh, it's kind of interesting for me. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, uh, I mean, we did well in those kind of, you know, uh, things. Uh, 
that's why probably you know i was not very good in biology in that mm -hmm. sense uh, because it was kind of little bit informative mm -hmm. uh, to mm -hmm. me mm -hmm. okay um, but anyway i mean once you cross uh, certain barrier then every subject looks same to you yeah when i am now in research okay i, I think now we can do research on uh, anything, anything that we yeah, want actually. okay uh, so one more point i want to ask kathikur because uh, this is a generally an issue for experimentalists especially and in your case you are also a condensed matter experimentalist mm -hmm. uh, the exposure to chemistry is also equally important yes yeah you know i have seen some of my own colleagues uh, of course there are a lot of our colleagues like uh, uh, surjit nair rashna and aparna and various different people who do condensed matter physics yeah. uh, where they also prepare materials including yes. you know, uh, they they also are very conversant in in uh, talking about structures in mm -hmm. talking about uh, uh, kind of you know chemical uh, aspect of a particular material uh, with of course with a very strong background in physics uh you know this is a point uh, i have also seen a lot of uh, people have an issue for example a lot of people who really get very very strong training in mathematics generally don't have yeah. that kind of exposure in chemistry but in experimental physics especially condensed matter experimental you cannot you cannot escape you cannot escape yeah, and you it, cannot is, ignore that. it is detrimental to to the work yeah, yeah could you please tell us because i am always curious especially with the uh, condensed matter physicists their knowledge of chemistry and appreciation is actually far higher than let's say conventional other uh, areas of physics could you please tell us how you how you uh, was there also a background in your education of that kind yeah yeah so uh... yeah this is something you know interesting the story i told you about the electrolysis is basically you know it's a chemistry problem yes. if i you know uh, understand uh, correctly okay uh, so this acid accident uh, it was uh, also a chemistry, chemistry problem exactly, yeah. it's a chemistry problem exactly. and i remember that once i tried something really bad <laughs> okay i got this naphthalene from somewhere yeah. I, i was very you know small at that time and uh, i mean my mother used to cook on this you know coal stove mm -hmm. okay so when she went uh, to school and somehow i probably that day my school was there is a holiday or something yeah. so i was at home uh, alone mm -hmm. okay <laughs> and i got this you know it's a winter time so somehow this blanket and other things came out of this big box where uh, there is naphthalene was given so that you know some bug will not destroy those things and yes. i got one of this naphthalene piece and i saw this uh, coal oven which still has a lot of heat in it so what i did i thought that okay let's see what happens if i you know hit uh, iron rod and then put it on the snap thread oh man <laughs> okay it was really bad because you know so what happened is that the moment i put it okay there is i saw that some fume is coming out yeah. of it and the moment i smell it i was having pain in my stomach oh man okay i thought the no this is a bad thing and i tried that just to make sure that it's because of that i tried it two three times oh. and then i come from the down no, it's happening because of this thing okay so it's a very bad way of trying chemistry <laughs> 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 okay uh, but yes uh, so uh, the you know uh, science that we yeah. generally start studying in our class in the conventional way this is unconventional yeah, way of learning <laughs> okay the conventional way it's called the physical science yeah, okay exactly, which yeah. involves both physics physical chemistry science. okay and then there is life science yes. which involves basically botany and geology yeah, and yeah, other yeah, stuff yeah, right, yeah, okay uh, so uh, interestingly uh, in our school okay the physics teachers were good okay uh, biology teachers were really good but the chemistry teacher was excellent okay that's very unusual that's very unusual oh. and uh, i mean um, he is actually he is very good he has also interesting background because i uh, took private tuition from him when i was at class 11 and 12 wow. so he has a background in chemistry but he used to teach us mathematics physics chemistry oh, so i had only one teacher okay where i learned everything okay so he used to tell that actually he was more interested in mathematics mm. oh mm. he wanted to study mathematics but because her his maths marks was not that great right. so he has to study chemistry chemistry was kind of the second favorite subject to him okay uh, so he was very good in uh, chemistry especially he used to show us various things i remember that 
he showed us a very simple example when uh, we were learning about filtration mm. so he took one filter paper this you know simple watman filter paper okay he came into the class and took some water uh. okay put some dust in it and put it on top and showing that see filter is once the filtration is happening you get clear water Fantastic. okay so it's a very simple experiment it's nothing like one sense but at uh, that age okay it looked very you know interesting to me i mean you see the so much a muddy water on the top and such clean water crystal clear water that is coming at the bottom okay i, I was kind of amazed uh, on that so we did get a good chemistry exposure right. because of that teacher okay i mean uh, and uh, interestingly uh, though it's a you know village school uh, it produces many good mm -hmm. students we had a very good chemistry lab which is kind of unusual, unusual right? okay unusual. we had a very good chemistry lab the biology lab was also good okay uh, i don't know how many you know frog we have sacrificed <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's all happened in class 11 right? yeah, but yeah. even at an earlier age uh, so this teacher when he was teaching us something okay uh, some chemical thing he used to show us those things or they they will take a, he will take us to the lab and so things okay the flame test those simple simple things but uh, it kind of you know ignited our curiosity that okay there is something happening now we should learn what is happening okay so he made us kind of learning chemistry fun okay we rather had you know not that great teacher in physics okay mm -hmm. uh, we had one little bit older teacher and one young teacher the young teacher was kind of good mm -hmm. Okay, but he, he was uh, very good in uh, painting. Okay, so he was more interested <laughs> on uh, that. He's a great painter, actually. Okay, okay. Uh, so, uh, and the older teacher, he is a good teacher, but uh, he has difficulty in grasping the new things that is coming up. So, we used to see him that he's uh, you know studying those books before taking the class, and I used to think that what is there to study, you know, and sitting, <laughs> it's uh, kind of simple things. Are there, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, so we got a good exposure in chemistry. Mm -hmm. So that we got from the school. So my mathematics inclination is uh, probably from home. Mm -hmm. Okay, but this you know uh, uh, kind of whatever the chemistry and uh, chemistry is not a boring subject or whatever is yeah. that. Okay, that attitude we developed because of the school, and we got this you know uh, really nice uh, teacher there. Uh, but after class 12, when uh, I went to, you know, Kulani University, so that time um, Kulani was uh, kind of home university. Mm -hmm. It's like ISR, you have small number of students, yeah. they will get admission and they will finish till their, you know, masters. masters. Okay. Uh, so, and those days this was a little bit, you know, competitive. Though it's a small university, but just because it's a home university, you know, it was kind of a little bit uh, competitive. And... Uh, getting a you know chance in Kalan university was kind of a turning point in my life okay, as far as i consider nice. and i was the last person to get admission in the second merit list okay mm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> nice. okay i came out to be the you know first but uh, mm. i entered there as the last person mm. and there i got very good teachers That's okay nice. it's a small university but the teachers are fantastic nice. okay so whatever my you know career path today is is because of them is because of my you know those university teachers uh, so i mean initially there is kind of you know uh, it's very difficult to kind of follow their uh, you know what they are really saying they used to tell that okay study these good books this and that and my seniors will probably tell oh we have you know in the market there is this in you know, a question answer type of book you should study them for the exam so I asked kind of a dilemma whom to listen to, whether the teacher okay, who is you know saying us to read the Barclay volume or this guy who is saying us some S. Chan book, okay, <laughs> something like that. And uh, you know, uh, so we quickly learned, I mean, probably a year or so that no, the teachers what they're saying is actually is very beneficial very in the long term. Right. Exactly. Okay, uh, because they are very open to us they are very friendly because though we had i remember that we had 23 uh, seats in total in the you know uh, physics department uh, and after first year half of them will go with for je mm -hmm. and other things medical entrance and other stuff uh, okay uh, so we end up with 11 students after first year okay uh, so it's a small class uh, yeah. okay uh, so it's kind of you know one to one interaction yes. and uh, 
you know some days maybe some student will not come so only a couple of students are there yes. uh, so that actually helped us uh, to build a good relation with the teachers, teachers. okay nice. uh, we could uh, you know kind of uh, discuss them even after hours we can go to their office anytime okay we want uh, and also in the class uh, we can kind of stop them and discuss them we didn't have like we had a syllabus but it's not that okay we have to finish this syllabus yeah, by exactly. any means okay it's not like that they are rather more uh, kind of giving stress to that okay you should learn okay uh, whenever we used to say about marks and other things they say you don't need to worry about marks That's, okay uh, and i think i got that impression so i also tell the same thing to my students that you don't really need to worry too much about the marks mm. if you know things well you'll do you'll it. do it okay you'll exactly. make it okay. so uh, I think you know uh, those teachers, the university teachers, uh, uh, they have a great impression on shaping my life in uh, kind of physics. Uh, because my school teachers, okay, I, I cannot say that uh, you know uh, I learned a lot of physics there. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, but this, okay, the curiosity is there. But uh, I would say that the chemistry teachers were rather you know uh, more uh, kind of. Uh, uh, efficient, efficient in that yeah, sense yeah. okay to you uh, know make their subject more interesting yes, okay yes uh, but okay i i liked uh, physics i enjoyed you know uh, reading uh, physics book so yeah one interesting thing is there when our class 12th uh, you know result was out so this older teacher who is kind of about to retire in next mm. few years so he called me and he said that you know uh, for the you know kind of first time in my entire teaching life which was kind of more than 30 years mm -hmm. or something that you are saying okay now today i am very happy and then i said why sir mm. uh, so it happened to be i was the first student who scored a letter much means 80 percent marks in higher secondary in physics wow very okay nice. very so nice. though the school produced many good Works students nice. like uh, district topper <coughs> and those things even my uncle he also studied in that school and he was a district topper nice. uh, from that school i didn't make those things <laughs> but, you know because i did really bad in biology <laughs> um so uh, anyway uh, so that so after doing that, uh, you know, kind of, uh, I was kind of determined that, okay, uh, I need to pursue, you gotcha. know, physics. Uh, so my brother was also studying physics at the time. Okay. He was in, I think, his uh, final year of BSc or yes. something like yes. that. Okay. Elder brother. Elder brother, yeah. I have only one brother yeah. who is elder brother. So it's kind of, you know, uh, I, I was kind of predetermined that, uh, okay, I'm going to study physics. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. And fortunately, I landed up in uh, this uh, in Kotlin University, mm. uh, where I exposed to such a good teacher. Okay. Uh, there are uh, like very good experimentalists with such a limited, you know, means, means. the way mm. they could do things. It was amazing. amazing. And yeah. the best part of, uh, you know, uh, the department is that those teachers, they allow us to explore things okay i remember that in uh, you know uh, in master degree the final year we had specialization mm -hmm. okay so one year is uh, completely specialization like we do ms thesis we didn't have any project or anything yeah. we have just specialization my specialization was solid state physics okay and the teacher uh, who used to teach us most of the special subject is uh, professor arobindo mm -hmm. okay uh, i think he is still alive he's like more than six feet tall, <laughs> used to come in a you know bicycle, okay, always <laughs> straight. And if he laughs, probably you know from one mile you could hear that. <laughs> he is such a charming <laughs> person. There are a lot of uh, good teachers who are there. Patanavadas Gupta, Prasant Rudra, okay, Chirantan Niyogi, Siddhartha Ray. I mean, there is you know I I, I should name everyone yeah, yeah, because yeah. there is you know uh, so this all is, these teachers were exceptional. Uh, what's the location? This, this so it's uh, nearly fifty uh, kilometer away from Calcutta. Calcutta. Okay, uh, and it's a uh, not though it's a city, but the settings are you know kind of a village setting. So mm -hmm. for me, it's a, I can open the uh, when we are doing this uh, chemistry practical, I can see that cows are roaming <laughs> around. I said okay, and my friend who came from you uh, know. Hardcore city, uh, he used to set up. So, look at why we are seeing the cows here. <laughs> <laughs> so, to me, it looks very soothing, and to him, it looks annoying. <laughs> uh, so, anyway, uh, yeah, that uh, you know, university uh, uh, during our time or uh, during um, 
that time uh the teacher quality was exceptionally yeah. good yeah. okay see this is something very uh, important as you could because you know generally the notion is that only wherever there is a big city there you get good education yeah this is not the conventionally at least correct. those days it yeah. was not true so, because yeah. i know some of those teachers they got job offer in good places, places. Okay, which, yeah. which is at the center of the you know yeah. uh, city okay uh, but uh, they were i i, I can uh, remember I, I i mean i can name the yeah. professor sure. okay uh, professor siddharth ray okay who did his uh, phd and everything abroad okay. oh, he okay. has a you know a big exposure on that um so he got a job in kalyan university mm-hmm. first mm-hmm. okay then later he got a, an offer from calcutta university okay okay mm-hmm. it was very prestigious yeah, very you know prestigious. calcutta university is the famous university yeah yeah okay yeah, it's rich. my brother started in calcutta university <laughs> okay <laughs> okay uh so but uh, you know i i heard this story from one of my uh, teacher uh-huh. again from the department then then his mother told the professor dattar's mother told that no you know you got a job there first so i don't think that you should leave that job for a better opportunity okay wow. <laughs> you should have that accountability they gave you the first opportunity so you should continue that so he used to commute from calcutta to come to this kalani every day okay and i mean this is a fantastic yeah. teacher okay there, there as a fantastic human, human being yeah. i mean all of them uh, like uh i i should say that i don't know how much physics i learned okay uh but uh, i learned a lot about uh, being a good human sure being me. from them okay uh, all of them are fantastic human being and we kind of you know we were associated so closely yes. with them uh, um, i mean that i i, I feel very fortunate, fortunate. that uh, okay i got all this you know uh, teacher at the time and uh, Yes, uh, those days I think people had this uh, idea, idea because yeah. I think some very good teachers were there in that university. The one reason is that people tried to avoid this crowded city, yeah. Yeah. so they wanted to live little bit away from the city so that we can get yeah. the advantage of the city when yeah. needed. But you know, day to day to day life is not that crowded. It's not that you know, it's a honking about it. You don't say okay. True, true, true. Yeah, so exactly. I, I think that was the reason that we got a very good quality, quality. Uh, teachers. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So this uh, uh, this aspect of uh, ideal idealism, sometimes it becomes kind of you know uh, it, it comes under uh, criticism. Yeah. Because yeah. people think okay, it is important to be pragmatic and you know you don't have to you know be very idealistic. But you if you look at it in a different way. A lot of inspiration you derive is out of people who are idealistic. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Right? I mean, they actually inspire us. Yes. Okay. It's not the people who yeah. <laughs> are opportunists. Yeah, exactly. Okay. exactly. They don't inspire us. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Uh, yes. uh, that time, I mean, uh, people put you know ethics and other thing at a higher priority. Okay. Uh, they, I mean, idealism is probably oh, yeah. you know, much more important for Absolutely. them. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, rather than earning more money or getting little bit you know benefits yeah, uh, yeah. they probably prefer something else something that is else. M- yeah. more important for uh, yeah. you know human being i think see after all year, all the years you still remembering that but yes yes right? i remember uh, you know right, i mean yeah. uh, they you know kind of gave a lifelong impression yeah, sure. okay yes. how our career yeah. not only career I means as a human being how we are going to evolve okay uh we had some amazing teacher i mean i don't know how all of them were gathered <laughs> on the same place okay it probably happens once, once in a lifetime, a lifetime you know yes, yeah yes. i mean uh, i remember we had one teacher uh, professor chirantan niyogi i mean uh, he, he was actually <laughs> those days i mean we didn't know that it's called outrage but he used to do this you know <laughs> science uh, popular yeah yeah he used to do this um, program in uh, radio Oh, okay. nice. radio has you know far more appro rich in uh, village side absolutely okay. see that is the inspiration for yes, yes, podcast. the podcast <laughs> is kind of like that because i think the best thing is that you can do your regular work by listening exactly. something exactly that is a if pitch. you sit in front of tv yeah. and watch something you cannot do anything, do anything yes. that's why probably tv is called idiot box i don't know <laughs> <laughs> but no, no, i'm very glad you're mentioning and it's also kind of a great uh, shout out for uh, podcasting no 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 that is uh, that is exactly the reason why yeah. I, I mean see 
you can drive while listening a song exactly. you can yeah. uh, listening uh, you know some uh, news yeah. but you cannot drive while watching a movie oh, yeah. <laughs> okay that yes, is not possible okay it says like so yeah so these teachers i mean uh, so this uh, professor okay uh, his name is uh, professor chirantan nyogi he used to do this uh, you know uh, program in uh, radio mm. where uh, in a li- it's a live program nice. people you know pick up their phone and ask any question related to science wow fantastic. and the science is not only physics though is a physics professor they can ask okay why the you know kind of uh, Uh, this algae grows more on that side uh, of uh, no wall okay uh, it's kind of like that. and okay uh, we are not very familiar with google at the time yeah, but he was, he was a google, google. <laughs> okay Fantastic. i mean he has knowledge of almost how much to say how much they know okay that's amazing guy so I, i i often say this thing that those teachers are inspiration for me mm-hmm. but they are also a source of frustration for me because I know for sure that I will never be as good as them. Yeah. Okay, yeah. they are exceptionally good. Exceptional. Okay, exceptional. And uh, it's uh, not. This is in nineteen nineties. Okay. Uh, this is yeah. So I started in nineteen ninety four. Right. Okay. okay. Uh, I stayed there because you know little longer because my health condition. I had to drop here and okay. all those things. So I I was kind of uh, know them a little bit more. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Nice. Nice. Uh, so uh, yeah, I mean. Uh, those teachers were uh, fantastic mm-hmm. okay uh, there is a, so this teacher okay apart from doing this <laughs> kind of outreach okay um he, he i think he taught us electronics once uh, he used to take class of almost everything sometimes mathematical mm-hmm. methods sometimes make quantum mechanics so that time he, he took electronics uh, so he will come into the class and then he will ask okay what we have to you know teach today yes. okay, what we are going to learn today Then sir, oh sir, the syllabus says that we should learn about television today. Oh, we have to learn television. Okay, let's see how television works. Then he will start building the circuit right over there. He will oh, say, man. okay, let's put the capacitor here, put a transistor here. Oh, then put a resistor here. But okay, if I put the resistor, then the signal will no. I think we don't need to put a resistor here. Then there will be this problem. So I should put the resistor here. So it's kind of you know he is inventing television yes. right there in the blackboard. Nice. This is nice. something amazing. I mean, nice. we used to be surprised that how this guy. I mean, uh, I mean, the depth of knowledge. Okay, <laughs> to me, they are the real yeah, physicists. Yes, yes. Okay, yeah, absolutely. So yeah. I would want to emphasize this very important point. This is first principles thinking. Yes, because this is actually the power of physics. Exactly, exactly what you mentioned, and of course, power of basic sciences. Basic okay. science is With the analytic aptitude. Aptitude, yes. and you go to the first principle where you take the most fundamental elements yes. and build things up from that particular point yes. of view. And this is actually, as you properly mentioned, that is the way fundamental science actually is done. Like physics, physics okay. is done. Is, is exactly yeah. that. I think. Uh, I mean. all the sciences are done that that way okay so if you don't have a solid base yes. okay yeah. if you don't have a proper grasp on the base if you cannot use, use them it. freely if you don't know how to do the permutation combination, combination of those fundamental knowledge then you cannot build anything absolutely okay. absolutely and interestingly what i found this my realization is that if you know those things then you don't need to remember, remember anything exactly you don't need to remember anything okay then and there when it is needed you can build things okay precisely right okay. see that this is a very important point that could because a lot of uh, uh, i'm not say school children school children actually are generally much more curious the problem comes when you are coming close to 11th and 12th yeah because the curiosity uh, dies, dies you know uh, i mean our system it kills the curiosity yes, yes. okay It so, only teaches you some techniques. Techniques. Okay. Techniques. It always match. Yeah. Boil down to techniques. See, the, then s- s- science and mathematics and all disciplines become subservient to an examination. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Because yeah. it becomes a means to an end. Yes. And uh, that end is uh, so fictitious in the sense because uh, you're really not gaining. Anything no, no. Other it, than it's say, it's really an end. Yeah, that yeah. you perfectly say that it's really an end. Yeah. 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 So uh, uh, that is a a point of concern, and uh, you know, the, as you mentioned, because if you want to really do anything, uh, and if you don't have to remember everything, the fantastic way is to kind of 
invest your time and energy into understanding the first principles and build things as you go along which means is it also is training you to do research yes you are basically <laughs> doing research then exactly yeah. exactly and that sometimes is a lacking because you know most of the time the examinations become pattern written oh, yeah, yeah, right yeah. because you probably would be trained to do it at a very quick pace and uh, at that particular instant the children are very uh, kind of receptive they they can actually spend their energy to do that mm-hmm. but you will see that as time progresses that is turning out to be not so effective way to think about problems in the real world yeah. because uh, you uh, you are not solving a solved problem yeah, yeah. most of the time see solved problem in the sense you are not solving a problem which which you know that there is a source from which you can gain the knowledge from mm-hmm. because in research many a times you would also be solving sometimes a solved problem yes, yes but you don't know whether there is a solution yes, you don't yeah. know the source that's the best thing that's the best thing yes. right and uh, this kind of thinking what is this mentioned whether you use the first principles become so so critical so important so important so actually when you mention this i should mention one you uh, know in incident uh, so uh, one student came uh, in my office one day mm-hmm. because uh, you know we have to look after some students now we are yeah. i don't know what is that name Okay. Yeah, mentor, uh, mentor, mentor, mentor. Okay. Yes, uh, we are mentor of certain number of group of yeah, students. Yeah, you're right. You're right. So if they face any problem, oh, they will come yeah. to you. So one student came to my office one day, and uh, it's before COVID yeah. uh, time, uh, and he said that, sir, I am having difficulty in understanding what is going on in the class. Yeah. He is having difficulty in general. Okay, in understanding yeah. things. Then he said that I came to JE, so if you give me a problem, I can solve. Mm. Mm-hmm. but if you ask me to think to like kind of you know <coughs> independent thinking okay to do something more oh, uh, sure. with this knowledge i am having difficulty yes, yes. Mm-hmm. then i said that okay it's uh, you are not responsible for this yes. okay <laughs> uh, the process that you went through, went through. made you like that okay uh, it killed your curiosity okay it killed your that efficiency of independent thinking okay uh you are now kind of a calculator, calculator. okay you get a exactly. problem you can solve that problem say yeah. he say that you give me any problem i'll be happy to solve it. It. okay yeah. uh, but i am having difficulty in uh, kind of uh, understanding things mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so this is something uh, that is going on for quite some time mm-hmm. so, you know no. mm-hmm. every time we feel that it's high time that you know we should do something about it and uh, till we do it at the you know kind of Uh, school stage, stage. it's yeah, not it's going not to be rectified see okay. the, from my own experience uh, interacting with my daughter and also i am sure you would have also yeah. got this uh, as we keep kind of looking at it because uh, my daughter is still in, in a early uh, part of the education like uh, fifth, four, uh, fourth standard and other things uh, you see that there is a lot of curiosity still there <laughs> still there yes uh, you know the most important thing is to somehow ensure that curiosity is preserved preserved because i see also kids who grow up a little bit further yes. suddenly the pressure is so much this is so much once they go to the ninth grade it's you kind say, of it's abrupt change abruptly they are okay. actually orienting themselves to examinations yes. and other things again goes back to the point what you are mentioning about the fact that if you look at the first principles the yeah. foundational aspects and uh, that is where you know good good kind of training in physics mathematics and uh, chemistry and biology is so important so with this uh, we will also move now towards your transition into uh, let's say the college and subsequently into the higher education and uh, tell us a little bit about that yeah, yeah. so you know uh, when we are in uh, master uh, degree okay i kind of uh, was sure that okay now we'll it, this is uh, in kalyani right uh, this is in kalyani so bsms both so oh, bsms it's a home university oh. so we kind of spend our entire you know college or university whatever say in the university itself very nice okay very nice. Uh, so in, in uh, masters uh, we took this you know solicited fees uh, special as a special paper mm-hmm. uh, the and uh, from there i knew that i'll be doing research okay that was kind of you know in my mind that i don't want to stop my education right away mm-hmm. okay i need to do research and there is one interesting uh, you know uh, kind of motivation uh, behind doing research mm. it's sometimes i laugh when i think now mm-hmm. 
I always think that, okay, this is, you know, there is exam pressure and all those things. So, all these books, I cannot read them properly. I cannot really understand them properly. Uh, Once uh, these exams are over, so I knew that in PhD, there is no exam. Okay. Uh, so, once I go to PhD, I will learn them, you know, peacefully. Okay. <laughs> there is no exam. Nothing. No one is going to disturb you. Okay. Uh, so, I will study them carefully. <laughs> okay. So, anyway, uh, so, uh, but... What is that, you know, topic that we should do research? Mm. That is something, you yeah. know, now it's coming, becoming more kind of need to focus a little bit. Yeah, okay. Uh, so anyway, uh, when I was in the uh, second year, I liked this uh, electricity magnetism mm. a lot. Electricity especially, <laughs> I liked a lot. Then uh, I started liking quantum mechanics, uh, solid state physics, Price. statistical mechanics. Price. Okay. We had a fantastic quantum mechanics teacher. Okay. Uh, I mean, he was so good that anyone who is coming out of that university, mm -hmm. if you ask, like, uh, tell me, you know, one thing that you are strong in physics, everyone will say quantum mechanics. Right. I mean, he was such a good teacher. Okay. Uh, so, so, in fact, that is amazing, Rajikur, because, you know, uh, that is probably also the design of the curriculum or yeah. something like that. Uh, that is always the popular, most the most popular uh, subject. It's a design of the curriculum and uh, sometimes, you know, uh, people are, uh, because the concept is, you know, uh, so something fascinating. fascinating. <laughs> it's yeah. unusual. Okay. Absolutely. The so, moment okay. you see that, okay, electrons can be everywhere. <laughs> it's passing through the two door at the same time. This is some things, you know, and contradict to the classical thing. Absolutely. Okay. Because this is precisely the point why... In, uh, it's why so it's so interesting and important to bring context. Yes. Context in the in this particular uh, part it is the contrast. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because yeah. you would have always studied classical physics. Suddenly you see something which is very very unusual. Different. Unusual. Right. Yeah. The same thing happens even with relativity for that. Yes. Matter. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I, I think you know by nature human being are kind of more, more interested on something that yeah. is. Uh, giving them a contrast okay uh, or that is kind of challenging, challenging okay. absolutely uh, so okay i had you know kind of a broad liking of this you know uh, subjects uh, then uh, i asked one of my teacher that okay what is so solid i will be doing some work in solid state physics that is kind of you know um, decided uh, then I ask, okay, what is so kind of important these days in terms of research? What is oh. so fascinating in solid state physics? Mm -hmm. Okay, this is again uh, this uh, Professor Chirantan Niyogi. Right. So uh, he was kind of a little bit younger in that sense. Uh, he told that, you know, these days this nano is a big buzz. So, like right now, you know, <laughs> quantum technology is a big buzz. <laughs> it's kind of. And he said that there are a lot of interesting things yeah. because you are saying that you like, you know, quantum mechanics, you like electricity, you know, magnetism, you like solid state physics. So all these things you will get together if you are doing something in nano structured material. Nice. Okay. Nice. So that's the first time I heard about nano and then I, you know, kind of uh, started uh, getting <laughs> some information. Uh -huh. uh, 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 about uh, to, uh, or what is it uh, and uh, what are the interesting things that is going on. Nice, nice. Uh, so, okay, in uh, final uh, year, you have to give the, all these exams to go for PhD. Uh, at the same time, there is, you know, uh, quite a bit of attraction about Baba Atomic Research Center because that's a job. job. Okay. <laughs> so, I also gave all this, whatever the exams we gave, everything, an aid gate, uh, okay, all those things uh, that we gave. Uh, then, okay, I mean, we qualified all of them. Nice. Then I, now there is a little bit of dilemma because uh, I had a very good GATE score and Fantastic. one of my, you know, little bit distant uncle, uh -huh. he was also studying uh, physics in the same place, Kallan University. And after doing M.Tech, he was placed in a very good abroad, okay, very attractive job. So that was very, you know, kind of. Uh, good information for my mother that if you do MTEC, then you can get land up in this job. Yes. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, he was saying that, okay, I mean, you should think mm -hmm. about it because uh, one of my friends who has a similar kind of, uh, you know, uh, get score, uh, he went for computer <coughs> science. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and uh, there is another, this, uh, you know, BRC that, uh, that is also attractive. Then I ask again, uh, one of my professor that says, okay, I have these options. So, mm -hmm. which one should I take? 
and i also gave entrance exam to the saha institute nice okay. nice uh, so he said that okay what do you want to do in future i said sir i want to do research okay i don't want to stop my career right now excellent okay. excellent then he said that okay then you don't need to think too much about it go for research okay nice nice uh, so you go and join saha institute uh. and uh, professor milan sanal who is my phd advisor yes, yes. he was also a, you know uh, ex student of kalyan wow, university wow very nice so he said that okay i mean that uh, professor said that Milan is there. Okay, you go and join him. He works in Nano. <laughs> okay, I yeah, said I okay. Mention, that ticks all the boxes for me. For <laughs> okay. the listeners, I should mention that uh, uh, Professor Milan Sanyal is one of the foremost physicists from uh, from India, and uh, outstanding experimentalist yeah. has trained a lot of uh, physicists. And uh, Aratikur is uh, is part of uh, that that Akada. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And yeah, so there are some. So uh, I mean. Um, <laughs> I, I came back here on fifth and fifth. I actually was uh, sitting with uh, Professor Sanyal yeah. in science room because every time I come, I just make a you know trip to Science Institute science. because that is on my way. Yeah, okay, <laughs> way to airport, so <laughs> I take kind of uh, you know uh, stop there. I make a stop and you know <coughs> see. So fortunately, this time I could uh, you know meet him. No, yeah. nice. Yeah. Nice. So I, I was telling him this story that uh, you know. um my health was not good when i was in uh, msc final year uh -huh. so i had to drop one one uh -huh. year because of the health condition uh, so it was a little bit you know uh, upsetting for me that uh, you know all my friends they you know yeah. uh, went from yeah, the yeah. university okay uh but when i came to saha institute and i joined professor sanal there is a story behind that also mm -hmm. uh then i came to know that professor sanal didn't take Uh, you know any student uh, last year uh, okay so i was thinking okay that is kind of destiny if i was coming if my health was good <laughs> i'll be coming and wow. i'll miss him okay so it's everything is kind of you know all set beforehand <laughs> coincidental <laughs> coincidental it's yeah. uh, kind of amazing yeah. okay yeah. uh so yeah i came to saha institute yeah. okay and that's where my kind of you know research started we had this one year post msc course work nice okay uh, but it was fine i mean we did well in that course work okay um and uh, at the almost at the end of the course work you start doing uh, research research yeah so i went to professor sanal and uh, you know i told him that i want to do you know research with uh -huh. you okay um then he said okay you know you know there is you know some rule in my you know in joining me uh -huh. uh because if multiple students approach okay then i have to take uh, you know uh, one or two out of them okay yeah. i generally take uh, one or two uh now you can tell that okay i can take one interview and do this and that yeah. but then the onus is on me that uh, i made any discrimination of i am responsible for choosing it right so what i do i have a very clear cut you know guideline whoever you know does well in the post msc exam okay he has the priority, priority. Yeah. okay yeah. so i basically follow that merit list yeah. Yeah. uh fortunately i did well in yeah. that yeah. okay so there is no issue <laughs> and uh okay i joined his lab uh, you know formally and then uh, we are discussing about uh, what we are going to do yeah. because uh, he's famous in uh, extra yeah, scattering right okay exactly but i was interested in doing electronic transport yeah. okay <laughs> so i said that i want to do electronic transport <laughs> then he thought for you know 10 second probably was thinking then why this guy is you know, here okay but you know i mean i, I was always fortunate to come across this you know great people yeah. okay like i got really great teacher then you know professor sanal he was someone who will always take new challenges mm -hmm. he like to take new challenges so at one point when you join three of his student was working in completely three different problems wow. one is in magnetism one is the thermal conductivity uh, thermal property and one is in uh, stm based electric uh. transport so it was amazing i mean because he has this curiosity uh, okay yeah, yeah. Uh, so then he told me that okay the kind of work that we want to do we don't have any setup for setup. It. okay so we have to build it nice okay. nice Then I said, okay, I like building things. <laughs> okay, 
So after a long time, I will get that opportunity to you know, will say, I will say that okay, I will set up the lab. So okay, he said, I am happy to do that. Uh -huh. uh, then uh, he said that okay, let's uh, you know, uh, 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 we'll uh, kind of order stuff. You will find a place where we'll set up all those things. Nice. Okay. So two students joined together, I and uh, Indranil. Indranil is my mm. you know colleague. Um, so Indranil Sarkar he is in INST. INST, uh, okay. yeah. in the Mohali. Mohali, okay. yeah. Uh, so we two joined yeah. together. Uh, so uh, we got a room that was kind of you know chemical room beforehand. Mm. Okay. So we clean up that room. Uh, <laughs> okay. We started kind of really building it from the scratch. Nice, nice, nice. And here is something you know. Uh, that helped me a lot. So initially, you know, at the time, placing order and getting things used to take a little bit of time. time. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So it took almost uh, three years to set up the lab. Nice. And my theoretician colleagues are about to graduate. Okay. <laughs> they are about to submit their thesis. But it never you know, appeared okay. to me that okay, I uh, know I, you should be in a I, I should be in a hurry. Yeah. Okay. I was enjoying my work. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that it took time, okay, because setting up the lab and then doing experiment, it definitely, you know, uh, it's uh, the expense of time. But it gave me enormous, you know, uh, kind of confidence to do things, to build things, uh, uh, how to set up a lab. And uh, it's not that the things that I build here, I build all of them earlier. Yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. because I had those kind of basic knowledge. So I build new things yeah. based on that, which I never, you know, uh, we learned it. Yes. I have probably used it, so I got a sense that how it might work. Okay, then we started, you know, kind of building. So anyway, I know our journey was in PhD was really uh, fascinating. So one thing that we remember, uh, I started uh, working with, uh, you know, this uh, conducting polymer nano. Oh, that is kind yes. of a quasi dimensional <laughs> system. That is a model system, and for quite some time, so actually for almost two years, we mm -hmm. are not getting any really good result, mm. you know, breakthrough result we are not getting. And I was uh, like insisting uh, Professor Sanal that oh, I should quit this problem and take a different problem. Uh. <laughs> okay. We got some sample from some other uh, people, a uh, different type of sample. So I was saying that oh, I have those samples, shall I start working on them? He will always say that, you know, it's a research. Okay. So people have seen those things, you have to again look at them. Mm. Okay. Yes. You will find something. Uh, so keep your patience, try. Very cool. And mm. you know, just before I was getting married, I got a breakthrough on that. I got some really <laughs> good result. Okay. So I remember that I got those results. I told uh, uh, Professor Sanal that, oh, I got some fantastic result. I will come and analyze. So I am going to get married. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, so that was, uh, you know, some interesting thing. And then uh, that, you know, kind of breakthrough uh, didn't only help me to finish my PhD, it actually helped uh, at least two of my seniors to finish their PhD. They also worked on the similar, you know, on the same system, actually. Uh, so, I mean, all these things. So, he used to tell that, you know, PhD is a training period. So, all these patients and all these things, I think it's indeed a training, training. period that yeah. helps you to say properly as a future researcher. How, how okay. do you think is the, the issue? Yeah, that, that actually, you know, helped me a lot. After that, you know, after finishing PhD, I went to, you know, uh, Johns Hopkins yeah, for yeah, doing we'll my... we come to that particular point. Yeah. yeah. I, just one question before we switch to your uh, uh, Western pasture. Yes. <laughs> where you went. Uh, one of the crucial elements, in fact, you know, some of the papers what you wrote was, were also very interesting. And uh, also had some implication in understanding transport in uh, nanowires yeah. and other things. Uh, and this is a time, as you mentioned, where uh, nano is kind of becoming uh, kind of a very, very interesting problem. Yeah. It also has led a foundation for uh, a lot of uh, low dimensional materials. Yes, yes. Right. So um, during that time, uh, how was your training, Atikur? Like because you did uh, excellent experiments. But I also see that your initial papers had also theoretical kind of uh, yeah, yeah. kind of uh, discourse in terms of papers, whatever you're writing. What was your training phase? What was the kind of uh, exposure you had during that time? If you could just briefly tell yes. about it. Uh, so the advantage of you know 
starting something new okay both from the advisor side and my side is that we both you know kind of learning yeah, together yeah, nice, okay nice. and we had to study the background theory yeah, and other nice, thing nice. and i will always discuss uh, with him that okay probably this is happening we often talk to it uh, you know a uh, theoretician okay i'm thinking probably this is happening in my system uh, so whether uh, this is you know right or not so you know that uh, i think the kind of problem that we chose at that time we had the advantage that the theory was not developed so well so, well, mm. so we could do little bit of you know venture on that mm. side also yes and yes. Uh, you know we were doing experiment in the labs which we always like to do but at the same time you know my teacher told that okay you should also read paper on a regular basis yes. okay and those papers uh, often uh, you know it may be just uh, pure theory okay uh, so i i like to read even the background like theory okay. paper Absolutely. okay that always helped me it's not that i understood all of them mm -hmm. but at least it helped me to understand my, my system yeah, exactly okay so we got some result and for one result we are kind of puzzled for really long time that what is happening then we came up with some theory that okay people again we Uh, read some paper and got that idea that probably this is happening in my system okay but for that thing there is no theory available so we try to kind of you know do little bit of theory yeah, which yeah, yeah. can explain our own experimental uh, result absolutely okay. right. so absolutely. Uh, that you know kind of that is also training, training. okay that uh, helped us a lot and uh, then we discussed with uh, you know lot of uh, theoretician so this is something you know gives us an advantage as where you know uh like you have a good experimentalist and good theorists and all are uh, in the same, same place okay you can discuss with them uh over a cup of uh, you know tea absolutely okay. no in fact that is also reflected in your uh, research uh because even now uh, whenever yeah we, we we've written papers together you also try to bring in the theoretical yes. viewpoint and uh, that's similar even my group because in my group we also have a small component of theory and simulations and things and that's a very important way of looking at problems you're right yeah. so in that sense uh, we will then now move to your stint in the united states of america where you up your game even further and uh, before i very specifically go into this problems you probably also you know developed some outstanding you know uh, capabilities in uh, nano fabrication yes tell us a little bit about your experience in the us and how did you develop that expertise uh so yeah when I, uh, when we were staying at the science institute almost at the end of my phd the cb in lithography yeah. came so i got a little bit of exposure over there uh, but then when i went to you know john sopkins for my postdoc mm -hmm. in in a markovics lab uh so there again i mean um, she is more famous on uh, superconductivity uh, uh, she yeah. is a student of michael tinkham michael okay. tinkham okay okay uh, interestingly both my advisors one is a postdoc of michael tinkham and as a graduate student of <laughs> michael tinkham <laughs> okay yeah. so it's a connection is all <laughs> yeah yeah so i mean uh, in hopkins uh, we chose a you know problem related to graphene mm -hmm. okay uh, now we wanted to explore this you know beautiful material i mean I am always fascinated with graphene. It's such a nice material. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and we had. A, uh, so this was which year? Can you? Uh, uh, so he went on two thousand nine. Okay, two thousand nine. I went to John Hopkins. Uh, John Hopkins. Okay. okay. So uh, there we had a research scientist. Uh, okay, uh, Janice Guikema. Mm. Uh, she is actually a graduate student of uh, you know in Kathy Moller's group uh, in uh, Stanford. Mm. Uh, she actually taught me you know how to make graphene do this exfoliation nice, this and that nice. okay so whatever i learned about those things it's i completely owe to her uh, okay nice, nice. Uh, uh because you know it's a new place yes. okay the first thing i went to us i was trying to figure out why this land is so successful mm -hmm. because in baltimore it's in baltimore the uh, land the uh, environment looks almost same as ours yeah, it's exactly. not that cool yeah, yeah, you're right so i was thinking why this place is so you know advanced uh, why are we are lacking okay so, yeah. i i realized that you know very quickly <laughs> that people are very sincere and serious about their work okay that makes them different exactly um 
so anyway uh, so there i started working on uh, graphene uh, so there i really uh, kind of uh, you know we had to get this expertise of how to do nano fabrication mm. because we have to make a device on graphene so the first problem that i chose is we will be making a uh, kind of interferometer in graphene mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. so it will be a kind of split ring interferometer where nice. you have a gold uh, ring which is kind of arno bomb ring mm -hmm. but it is split at the middle and there you will have the graphene, graphene. okay yes, yes. and we'll make even a pn junction on that split so there is a kind of uh, 80 nanometer gap where you have to make a pn junction so it involves multiple level of optical lithography and eating lithography. Okay. Okay. Uh, but again, you know, thanks to Janice who taught mm -hmm. me like how to do those things, uh, uh, how to develop those things. I also modified several, you know, uh, protocol mm -hmm. later, but the initial thing was, you know, I learned completely from her. And uh, uh, interestingly, the, you know, in university, there is uh, no operator. Yeah, okay. Exactly. The students, they will be using it. And that's the first time I started, okay, I can use everything. Okay. And our group was maintaining the clean room and the EV lithography. Okay. So all the kind of lithography thing was in, we are in charge of that. Nice. Uh, and that gave us a little bit of advantages that we could do EV lithography at any time, okay, during night or whatever we want. <laughs> uh, and it's a kind of, you know, it's... Uh, uh, equally amount of art in mm -hmm. making those devices, yeah, okay. Uh, and somehow I like that, okay. I was kind of fascinated in doing this nano fabrication, making it, uh, you know, kind of uh, bringing the perfection in the device, mm -hmm. okay. Every time I was thinking, oh, the device should look picture perfect, okay. <laughs> when you do <laughs> an ACM imaging, it should look picture perfect because mm -hmm. only then you can tell, because the device has to be very clean. clean we are doing yeah, some ultra yeah. low temperature measurement and if the sample is not clean, then there won't Never be any clean signs exactly. coming out of it. Okay. The, so, this, you know, nano fabrication training is basically done at uh, Johns Hopkins uh, University. Uh, I also learned this, you know, projects on lithography and other mm -hmm. techniques mm -hmm. there. And again, Janice taught me. And the moment I was exposed it to first, I, you know, I was so fascinated about it. I thought that, okay. Whenever I will get a chance to build my lab, I will make this, build this thing. Uh, so yeah, I mean, we did uh, quite a bit of work on uh, you know uh, electronic transport, but mostly you know mm. uh, low temperature transport yeah. properties of uh, uh, graphene and you know two dimensional material in general. Uh, so when I was about to finish my you know first PhD, that time Professor Sanal came once mm -hmm. in the US. Okay, we had a very good time and mm -hmm. then because there was some pending paper. So he stayed in a close by hotel where which is walking distance from my apartment. We sat there for you know a couple of days and finished all wow. those pending papers. Yes, yes. So that time uh, he was telling me about uh, like uh, what uh, what is my plan. He was asking uh, me what do you want to do next. Then I said that okay, I want to do one more postdoc. Uh, that is kind of my plan. Okay, I, I was almost finishing my you know third year of uh, oh, first yes, postdoc, yes, yes. but I wanted to do you know another yeah. postdoc. <laughs> I wanted to explore a little bit yeah. more. Uh, then uh, he told me, okay, uh, you have a good background on electronic yeah. transport and other thing in this. Uh, so why don't you explore something related to this, uh, yes. you know, energy related stuff. Yes. It might be useful yeah. for you. Okay. In long run. Um, then I said that, okay, I also like things. I like building things. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so, so something that is useful. That is perfectly fine. Okay, it uh, matches with uh, you know kind of uh, my <laughs> attitude. Uh, nice, nice. Then in the next postdoc, okay, uh, I got a couple of offer, but I chose uh, Brookhaven National Lab. Uh, the main reason is that when I went there, okay, uh, I saw those fantastic facilities, uh, okay, and mm. that attracted me. That okay, one should work here. Nice. The nice. facilities are fantastic. Okay. Uh, so then, in 2012, I moved to Brookhaven National mm -hmm. Lab. Okay, um, and uh, there, my work on this, you know, block copolymer based uh, lithography, mm -hmm. and uh, you know how to do the nano texturing to improve the efficiencies. It may be silicon solar mm -hmm. cell or making this anti-fogging mm -hmm. surface, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, or a hydrophobic surface. 
all these. So I again learned some different type of lithography. Okay. Nice. We are doing EVM lithography also during that yeah. time, but less EVM lithography, more towards this unconventional lithography, which you know my advisor uh, Charles T. Black, mm. we call him Chuck. Mm. So Chuck was kind of you know he is uh, famous in that. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. He okay. has I think forty patents in that. Wow. Okay. He was in IBM. Uh, okay, earlier than he came to, and he I mean see the another thing I learned when I was in Brookhaven is that. Uh, Whatever is your age or you know, whatever you are, you should also keep some problem for you and you should do experiment by yourself. Yes. So when I was Absolutely. doing experiment, Chuck was standing in next to me and he was doing experiment. He has always some small problem right. which he will do. Fantastic. Okay. Fantastic. That is actually the principle what yes. we follow in our lab. Yes. Way. Exactly. Uh, very nice. Very nice. <laughs> so I mean that actually impressed me. Yeah. Uh, I, I went uh, last in uh, November end and mm. December to oh, Dukhaven. Yeah. I met Chuck and I told that, you know, you taught me this. I learned from that, uh, seeing you <laughs> that you are working next to me. I also try to do something. <laughs> I don't know whether I, you know, uh, I can do it all the time, yeah. but I at least try to do right. something by myself. Okay, And that is uh, something very motivating. And uh, so when, when I was in the transition period from Hopkins to, you know, Brookhaven National Lab, so the department chair, okay, uh, Daniel Rice, uh, he told me that you know uh, one should go to national lab because that's a the experience is eye opening. You know, you will yes. you'll get to see how science is done in a different way in a different pace over there. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, so yeah, so I, I forgot to mention one uh, small story uh, during my stay in Hopkins. Mm. Uh, so uh, I had this, you know, our letterbox was uh, so my last name is Raman, uh, and then there is this Daniel Rice uh, whose letterbox is just above me, uh, and then there is uh, Daniel Reese uh, whose letterbox is just <laughs> below me. Okay, so one day I was coming out of the clean room, I was exhausted. I tried something, didn't work. So I uh, I came to the lab. So the clean room was in a kind of slightly different uh, building. I came to the lab and I saw uh, my advisor Nina was there. Then I told her, oh, I, was, I am so exhausted and I'm very upset. Okay, I tried so many devices, didn't work. Okay, um, uh, give me some good uh, you know, uh, news. Then uh, she looked at me and then said, what else do you want? I said, what's the good news? So our department got Nobel Prize. Oh. <laughs> so, okay, who is that guy? So you don't know. It's Daniel Rees. I said, okay, I saw his letterbox just below. <laughs> That's what I did. Oh, he got the Nobel Prize. <laughs> so, I mean, you get those feeling. Okay. Uh, so, this is something we miss here that, you know, you see those people and you feel that, yes, really, you are doing something. Okay, you are among all these people. Okay. Uh, so, it was fascinating. But in Brookhaven, the thing that I enjoyed most, so uh, our, uh, you know, center director, uh, uh, that time asked me that okay what you know uh, bring you here mm. okay uh, why did you choose uh, Brookhaven and then I said that you know or uh, what do you like most here I said I like the speed okay mm. some people might you know complain about American work yeah. culture but I somehow like that speed yeah okay. yeah I know I know because I know. You, you spent quite a lot of time in the US too yeah I spent uh, seven years yeah, you know exactly. there so and then I said in Brookhaven, I like the speed. Mm. There is no downtime. If some instrument is down, I send an email and in one hour it is up. up. Okay. So that I like most. Okay. Yeah, no, no, that is and something remarkable. Give, about it's a, you know, it's a heaven and hell difference. Yeah, exactly. Okay. That speed will, uh, you know, make yeah. a big difference. Absolutely. You and see, uh, since you're mentioning this long time ago, of course, about 20 years ago when I was in Purdue, there, uh, you know, I used to order uh, some optics uh, in the evening. By the time I come back to the lab in next morning, that item would have been. It's done. there. Huh? Yes. It means, uh, that is that is that probably is uh, one of something the very, amazing. Very, yeah, we used to order in MacMaster car. Yes. You order uh, before 4 p.m. You'll uh, get it next day, next day by 10 a.m. No. Oh, same day deliveries were there. Yeah, same day deliveries were also there. Yeah, yes, on yes. some premium yeah, yeah. or something. Yeah, like yeah, that. yeah exactly. Same day it's, it's more like a big basket. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> For research. And uh, that, you know, makes a big difference. Mm. So I, I always tell this thing that, you know, uh, in physics, you always say spherical approximation of yeah. cow. Uh. 
yes it's not the bigger things that makes the difference it's the uh, small small uh, thing that makes the difference absolutely. okay it's the cow has a small tail which the ball doesn't have mm. that's what makes the difference mm. it's mm. not the big things it's the small small things that makes the you know that builds the final picture absolutely okay. again you know listeners this is first principle thinking <laughs> yes <laughs> going back to the basics going back to the basics yes. that is very important yes. you know, that's yes. very crucial uh so yeah my brookhaven you uh, know stay was uh, very successful uh, it was very enjoyable okay mm-hmm. we have a uh, uh, you know second daughter uh, there uh, oh, at the wonderful, time wonderful. okay uh, so first daughter born when i was at hopkins and yeah. second daughter born when i was at uh, you know brookhaven okay first daughter oh yeah i mean my wife has to suffer you know <laughs> uh <laughs> she has uh, done only two years of post doc yeah, because yeah, of that yeah. i mean she has sure. to raise kids uh, to call the responsibility yeah. in brookhaven i had to change my visa to h visa so h visa dependent cannot work oh is okay. that yeah yeah so that she had to uh, she, i mean no, I whatever you are seeing here is yeah. the background there is uh, you know see here okay, this is there that's why Absolutely. i could do all those things no i should it's mention impossible. i should mention specifically aisha who is uh, atikur's wife she is also an excellent scientist uh, you know Uh, she also works in in the lab and yeah. does very interesting research and i'm hopeful that i'll be also talking to her at some point of time <laughs> yeah she's very shy <laughs> anyway so uh, and uh, brookhaven also the you know environment of long island i liked a lot okay uh, when i uh, went there it's kind of you could see european beauty in yeah. uh, you know us only yeah. in few places yeah. bro you know long island is one of the yeah. places where you don't see high rise building mm. okay it's kind of all this uh, you know uh, village type yeah, of thing like country country side. countryside yes yeah. exactly there is uh, like uh, this farms were there where you can go and pick your own you know vegetables or fruits which you do uh, now in, uh, in here so yeah i mean you know we you know kind of that habit we build when we are in brookhaven yeah, yeah, exactly. and there is another interesting thing that uh, there is a community garden which yeah, we yeah. you know enjoyed yes. a lot so we used to go with kids yes. so you get a small plot there okay uh, so the place that we uh, where there is a the community garden was called longwood victory garden yes, nice. so there there are a lot of small small plots are there so you just get them at a very nominal price oh, maybe nice. 10 dollar per year or something uh-huh. like that okay okay then you can grow your grow stuff your the only uh, you know, restriction is that you cannot use any chemical okay. so everything has to be organic okay okay, okay. Nice. and uh, nice. they will help you getting the fertilizer means the organic compost and all those things so okay. they will provide yeah i mean we basically we build so nice. someone earlier they build, did that thing we are using those compost when the harvest is done we will make our own compost for the next year nice okay nice. and interestingly who are the gardeners okay one okay i was there from brookhaven national lab there is the editor of physical review e who is our <laughs> next to us okay he is your your neighbor farmer <laughs> yeah neighbor farmer there is one uh, lady uh, from the longwood public library uh. okay this is the director of the longwood public uh. library uh. so there is people from various backgrounds okay. interesting backgrounds and the person who used to come to teach us how to do this farming was from cornell university nice okay uh. her name is i think margaret or someone uh. she used to come you know almost alternate weekends to teach us how to grow things what are the compatible crop that we should try why you should put this flowering plants next to it okay how that helps in pollination why you should put marigold plants you know here and there so nice. all these i mean this is also a, you know great learning experience, experience okay. absolutely and uh, yeah i still miss that i hope that we will be able to get some community garden here as well okay that's actually is a, you know great thing so yeah our stay in brookhaven was from all side it was uh, very enjoyable uh, so uh, if something we miss from us is basically our stay here in brookhaven okay, okay. Uh, it's also uh, a very reputed uh, national lab yeah it's uh, you know one of the you know, best national best lab. lab okay so that is the reason why the influence is from uh, from there for your farming uh, as a hobby right that's something yeah i mean uh, it was there in my family also okay. but uh, you know doing this thing i mean we had uh, by f- from generations we have some land property okay, okay. okay. i mean we still have some yeah, okay. okay uh but uh, I, yeah i like to grow things Thanks. okay that is also again curiosity driven <laughs> yeah, yes, okay. yes. um uh, but 
yeah we could you know and the kids could also do you know those things very so nice, nice. Uh, we could give that exposure to them when we are here yeah. which here we are missing we are doing little bit on the you know just on plastic pot we are doing yeah, on the balcony yeah. right now we still grow things okay i still have some chard and uh, oh, you know yeah. spinach and bitter gourd <laughs> and chili is there in my balcony okay uh yeah i i i like you know gardening uh, nice. uh, yes, uh, yeah. farming whatever you tell yeah. <laughs> okay in a small scale small scale, <laughs> small scale uh, gardening yeah small or, scale or gardening large or, scale gardening small scale small farming, farming. <laughs> yeah yeah uh so yeah and then on 2016 i came back here yes. and yes. started my uh, journey okay yeah. and uh, what made you come back uh, okay uh so when we went to us uh we went with this mind that uh, we'll come back okay okay and uh, you know initially it was kind of uh, it's a huge uh, trouble uh, we are every day we are looking this saw this movie and kind of you know <laughs> our, our tears are flowing we are missing our you know home country so much and we are thinking oh when will <laughs> go back okay so Uh, but yeah, at the same time, I should uh, no, no, acknowledge that uh, almost uh, when we are in Brookhaven mm-hmm. and when the kids started going to the school, that time we are also started thinking that if we don't get a good job back in India, then we can stay here. Stay here. Okay. okay. I actually started processing my green card application. I oh, spent okay. already some money for that. Oh, okay. I didn't, you know, finish it. Yeah. Uh, the reason is that not because i was fascinated about us mm-hmm. okay definitely the education yeah, you yeah, know yeah. was uh, something <laughs> attractive and uh, my kids who actually went to the school even uh, she is in touch with her first grade teacher wow okay. is it 26 yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah it was uh, you know uh, after and this time when i went i met her okay wonderful and i met her i hand over her uh, one of my daughter's painting, painting yeah, yeah. wonderful so man. i call my daughter yeah. from there she talked to her oh, she is in touch yeah. with her you know uh, we often send few things she also yeah. send things nice nice okay so you know teachers always yeah. makes uh, a deep some, connection yeah it's a big connection and they can change your life yeah. okay absolutely uh so anyway at the time i started applying mm-hmm. in india uh, but in india you know things are a bit slow yeah. so i was getting a little bit upset so i was thinking okay if i don't get a decent job then what to do mm-hmm. okay then i should stay back yeah. Yeah. i actually got an offer from um, this uh, famous uh, company uh, what is its name it's in idaho mm. Yeah, so I got a job in uh, Micron Technology. Ah, okay, okay, I got an offer from there, uh-huh. and uh, they are ready to give this uh, extraordinary visa, O visa, and all those uh-huh. things. Uh-huh. Yes. Okay, but anyway, I uh, wanted to do research, have my own lab. So I started applying in India, but uh, not getting quick response. I got a little bit of uh, you know uh, frustrated at that time. So I started looking in US as well. Uh, but anyway, uh, applying to ISR Pune was kind of. Uh, was very quick the response was bit quick from my sir pune mm-hmm. and uh, then i you know came for the interview uh, here in 2015 mm-hmm. june yeah, yeah. month and uh, after coming here i was kind of fascinated with uh, the labs at yeah. time it was highly cute i visited your lab yeah, you know yeah, yeah. Uh, we discussed a lot of things yeah. there and another thing that attracted me very much is the colleagues okay right, yeah. i could see that you know uh, there is a friendly atmosphere mm-hmm. here and which sometimes is very difficult to get not only in india in abroad also abroad, okay you don't get this kind of uh, atmosphere okay uh, everywhere uh, sovik was there yeah. okay <laughs> um, being both bengali okay we are talking sometimes in bengali and he was i don't know because of my bald head or something he was kind of you know saying apni okay is kind of with a very respectful <laughs> and so we can always say that it's because of your you know bald head <laughs> uh, yeah but you know uh, so i made this you know fantastic colleague i mean yes. my future colleague yes. i should say and i i was kind of moved yeah. okay yeah. uh then i went back to us i came for just to give yeah. a talk and the short visit okay i also got an offer in one of the research institute in bangalore mm. okay uh but when i got to offer from here yeah okay i thought that, okay this is the place i should go nice. okay nice. uh so this is the only place i came to give the interview <laughs> 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 and uh, so i joined and uh, again in june month mm. uh, 
uh, 29th June uh, 2016. Yes. Okay, that is my joining, and then my journey started here. Yeah, fantastic, fantastic, Atik. Good. In fact, uh, one of the very important elements of uh, moving back to your home country generally is kind of a satisfaction, although there is it is also a challenge. So, uh, were you uh, thinking about it because you know you had worked in some of the topmost laboratories in the world, and uh, here you are getting started, uh, where even the even though the ecosystem is good, especially the human resource would always be the positive aspect yeah, of Indian yeah. system. Uh, the infrastructure generally would never be able to match, at least currently as we are uh, in the economic state, whatever we are. Uh, where even the conventional institutions like Kaisers and IITs and ISCTFR, although they have very good uh, kind of uh, facilities, uh, it, it is no way sometimes matching to let's say broad requirements of a very high end uh, experimentation. So how did you adapt to that? Uh, yes, yeah, so that was kind of little bit of a tough time. Okay, uh, I came here and uh, my idea was that okay, I need these these equipments. Mm -hmm. uh, I will start uh, doing uh, things, but uh, during that time uh, things are little bit volatile. Okay, uh, the you know director at that time also he was not sure that whether or when the funding will come. So he was telling me okay, we'll get the funding, we'll get the funding. Don't worry. Okay, you start doing something. Yeah. Uh, but then, you know, a few months went, okay, like that. Uh, and then I realized that, okay, if uh, I am looking for that big funding and uh, then I will start my work, I will get stuck. So one advantage of having a PhD from India is that I know how to, oh, okay. how things work. Okay. okay exactly. If someone says one month, then what, <laughs> how it stretched, you know, how much it can stretch. Yeah, well, okay. Time dilation. Yes, time dilation. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> Uh, so then uh, I immediately decided that okay I should uh, you know uh, start doing something okay whatever is available around yeah, yeah. okay and whatever the small fund that is available so uh, you know uh, that time we used to just uh, go with some Indians and to ask them to sign and they used to do that okay that's things are little uh, you know uh, used to work in a different way. Uh, so I bought two you know assembled computer okay. And uh, build one uh, pre amplifier mm -hmm. with just 10, 50,000 rupees. We build that pre amplifier. It's a very ultra low noise, you know, it's a ultra low noise pre amplifier that actually works pretty well. Uh, and uh, build a box uh, which is bi metallic just to kind of do some sensitive measurement uh, so that the electromagnetic interference is less. And the sample box, okay, it's basically a big, you know, uh, glass bowl okay. which you use for like carrying tiffin <laughs> okay that was my sample box okay so that is kind of my first nice setup we also bought a DAC card for doing this yes. noise measurement uh, and uh, I think by the time I probably took one meter from someone okay so the colleagues were very helpful uh, you know that is something you know has helped me yeah. a lot so, so um, using this you know simple thing uh, and I uh, asked some samples from Professor Ogles. So at that time, the perovskite solar cells were kind of you know interesting. Uh, it's still very interesting. So I used to take samples from him and wanted to do some physics on it. So I basically started doing the starting the degradation mechanism of that. So I got a you know basically a BSMS student mm -hmm. uh, Ankit uh, at that time. So he kind of uh, the one who started working nice. with me at that time. So we started in this way. Uh, but the best thing is that, you know, though it's a very small, uh, you got kind of an empty room and everything was on a small table, yeah. but things started. started. Okay. That's a very that was something, I mean, I, I knew that I have to start, whatever yeah. is that, I should not wait for something Absolutely. when the big ticket items will be coming. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, so in this way, gradually I wrote proposals, we got some money, this and that. Okay. So it's, uh, it was never like that. I got a big chunk of money and I, you know, bought a big equipment, it was never like that. But slowly, slowly I, you know, built things, I bought some equipment and uh, we built a lot of instruments, you know, in-house, uh, which again, my previous experience, okay, helped me a lot, especially my setting up my lab during my PhD days. Okay. Uh, so once I was kind of making a list that the things that I build, it's more than 20 now that yeah. we build in our lab. Okay. Some may be very simple, some may be a bit complex. Okay. Uh, and, uh, you know, 
some of them even outperform the you know of the self item that you get okay from the market so uh, you know uh, sometimes uh, something might be frustrating uh, in the first appearance but in the long run long it run may be beneficial really, okay uh, you might uh, get uh, uh, some feeling of satisfaction that okay you can do that or you did that okay absolutely Absolutely. So I think uh, you know starting something, whatever is around you know us, that is very important. That attitude is very important. Absolutely, okay. absolutely. Especially, see, that's what uh, it also has to do with adaptability. Yeah. Because you cannot actually keep you know telling oh we don't have this thing, so yeah, we will not yeah. be able to do it. Uh, of course, in many a times, uh, if you have to really stick to that problem, you may have to get started yes, with something yes. and then build upon that. No, you should have uh, you know that dream uh, back of your mind that I will get yeah, that absolutely. thing. I want to set that thing, but for the timing, let's keep let's moving. Go. Okay, exactly. Uh, you'll have the plan for biryani someday, but now <laughs> let's have dal and rice. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, no, no, because so you correct. need to survive. Okay. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. So, uh, I think you we'll briefly tell us about the research problems uh, in so, your lab now. What so, you now we are doing as you already know, yeah. that uh, being uh, one of my, you know, best collaborator, more fruitful collaborator. Same here, same here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We work on two-dimensional material, mostly yeah. on transition metal disulfogenides. Okay. Uh, we study their electronic transport properties and in collaboration with you, we study their, you know, optoelectronic okay. properties. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, for the audience, I should say that uh, Pavan is, uh, you know, my most successful collaborator. We published in a maximum number of paper together. Okay. Uh, and uh, that is, again, uh, kind of advantages of being at ICER that we can collaborate with our colleagues without Absolutely. any hesitation. Okay. And uh, we do a lot of collaboration among ourselves. Uh, our ecosystem is such that, uh, you know, we have collaboration with our theory guys. Okay. Um, so we do this, uh, we grow our samples, okay. okay, that is just to be self-sufficient, we are not really expert in growth, yeah. but we do a little bit of growth, um, just to kind of uh, keep a constant supply of samples, but over the time also that gave us uh, some advantages. Um, so right now our main aim is to understand uh, the mobility limiting factor in two-dimensional material because that is one burning nice. problem in 2D nice. material and how this uh, you know dielectric environment affect the electronic and optoelectronic okay. properties of this two-dimensional material because being a 2D nature they are very prone to the any environment yeah, okay yeah. even on the substrate so we do a lot of even substrate engineering so my kind of uh, you know, uh, the training in Brookhaven that helps me to do this substrate engineering and then place these 2D materials and try to uh, study their uh, optoelectronic properties. Okay. And uh, in the uh, future, we want to kind of explore uh, it a little bit more and also move it to heterostructures yeah. of two dimensional material. Okay. Um, and uh, let's see how we can use this for some. Uh, you know, uh, application, which is kind of real level application. We, uh, so in my lab, uh, we do kind of, you know, fundamental studies, but uh, we also try to see if some of them can be applied for something, you know, some useful, uh, you know, uh, building some useful thing. Okay. Uh, useful in the sense that, uh, um, that can be used by other people. Okay. Uh, or it can be used to measure something else. Okay. Uh, so that's how we are kind of, uh, you know, um, wonderful making a journey. No, uh, the, one of the very important elements is also that you have trained very good students uh, because uh, a lot of them are uh, not only well versed in the concepts, but also the skills. And uh, that is uh, also a kind of, you know, important part, right? Especially when you're building a lab, you have to transfer the skills. Because the students are, or rather the PhD mm -hmm. and even postdocs are the ones who will take the pattern and really, you know, yeah, uh, yeah. go ahead and do a lot of uh, interesting stuff. So, <clears throat> in that sense, you are, your experience has been uh, uh, good in terms of the students. Uh, yeah. So, I, I was actually fortunate to get uh, some uh, very good students when I was starting my yeah, lab. Yeah, yeah. So, in the first batch, uh, you know, I got two PhD students, Gokul and Brinda and yes. Pamogno as uh, IPhD yeah, IPhD, student. Yes, yes. So, all three are fantastic. fantastic. Okay. And yeah. each of them has their own, you know, expertise. Yes. Okay. Yes. And uh, knack. Okay. I probably Gokul was very good. Who, has, who has collaborative papers with all of them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. I mean, you collaborated with uh, almost uh, most of my students. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I mean, uh, 
I think you know this uh, proximity and this ecosystem, yeah, this exactly. environment helps us a lot. I mean, uh, that is reflected in our productivity. Okay, uh, the moment I need some optical measurement, the student goes there. Okay, Absolutely. and the best thing is that see, we just tell that okay, we'll do this work together. That ends in the PI level, yeah, yes. but it is the student Students who right. you know exactly. does the thing and they can coordinate nicely. Okay, very nice. I I think uh, that is something. Uh, they are going to miss, you know, yeah. when they will go oh, okay. uh, exactly. abroad. Uh, okay. Sometimes yes. they will miss because, okay, there might be, uh, vib you know, vibrant environment in the lab itself, but group to group, group this group collaboration group. is yeah, not absolutely. easy always yeah, uh, abroad, especially. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, these uh, three students actually, uh, you know, helped uh, me a lot to set up all those things. Wonderful. Okay. Wonderful. Uh, like Gokul was very good in, uh, you know, building things. Building. Uh, Brinda was very good in optimizing something. I mean, she spent uh, you know enormous amount of time to optimize this growth uh, method uh, using chemical vapor deposition. And that time it was not so sophisticated. Now we have MFCs and yeah, all those things. Yeah. Those time all those like hand held things. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but she spent enough you know yeah. enormous amount of time. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and she has that patience. Excellent. Okay. Excellent. Uh, and Gokul is always, you know, being yeah. Gokul. I mean, he has interest in everything. Okay, and he has very good sense of, you know, instrumentation. You know, yes, yes. Uh, I mean, I was fortunate to have these three students. Fantastic. And uh, Pamaguna has a perfect combination oh, of, yeah, yeah. you know, intellectual, both uh, <laughs> theoretical understanding yes. and doing experiment. Yes. So yeah, it was, you know, I, I feel that I was very fortunate. So far, my students are, you know, I, I'm. In a good luck yes, so far. Yes, yes. Okay, most of my students are uh, pretty enthusiastic. enthusiastic. That's absolutely. That's what you need. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, you know, that's if that's they're important. trainable, if they want to learn, if they're open to learn, then that's what you. That's need. what you need. Yeah. Absolutely. absolutely. Great, great. You know, we are almost converging towards the end. And uh, please tell us a few uh, things about uh, the kind of directions you want to take. What are your plans uh, in terms of the projects? What do you want to take up? Uh, are there any specific directions you would want to go further and uh, elaborate a little bit? Uh, yes, so uh, in a you know two-dimensional material, uh, uh, as you know, my kind of training is mostly on electrical uh -huh. you know, transport properties, but we want to explore little bit of this optical thing. Okay, Very basically nice. optoelectrical, combining okay. both uh, yes. you know optical properties with electrical thing. Uh, uh, that we want to explore little. So our one direction, we we need to you know learn a lot. We need your help a lot. Right. <laughs> to, no, like to, mutual, uh, right. Yeah, uh, to explore those things, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we are also kind of you know while we are thinking about tuning the environment or not only the electric environment, but we also want to see how you can apply strain if you mm -hmm. use strain in these you know two D material. How their properties are, uh, you know, uh, changing, and uh, we started focusing a lot on the, you know, nature of defects in this two-dimensional yes. material. Okay, uh, because uh, the our understanding of defects is mostly coming from bulk system, well, yes. three-dimensional system, but people, you know, uh, more and more they are understanding that in two D it's okay. not exactly the same thing. Okay, the defects behave uh, differently. Uh, and it's not that defect is always detrimental for their property. Certain property there can be some improvement. Okay, so we are trying to. I mean, you can um, you know term it as defect engineering. Right. So we are right. trying to see how you can do defect engineering in this two-dimensional material to tune their optical, optical and right. electrical properties. Okay, uh, because uh, and we will explore some uh, you know, new materials uh, as well. So we are thinking of you know not only to stick mm -hmm. to those materials that we can grow in our lab so okay, we have some collaboration both in house and abroad mm -hmm. okay uh, where we can get the materials and we'll try to probably do the exfoliation yes, yes, and make yes. device and make heterostructure okay and uh, study their uh, properties okay so this is kind of the direction that we are you know uh, looking uh, forward because being a part in the i hub we oh, have yeah, to yeah. also i uh, know uh, look into the uh, it's quantum technological yeah, you know yeah. aspect of mm -hmm. these things and i think uh, 2d materials are a great candidate yeah, for those for things that. okay um so yeah, yeah this is that's that's uh, wonderful that's really uh, fascinating 
I also know that you do a bit of outreach, especially when you go and also talk to uh, school children and other places. And uh, uh, are you planning to also take it further? Are yes, you, uh, yes. So uh, earlier I was kind of too much involved in setting up the lab, and those mm -hmm. things were kind of missing mm -hmm. uh, from my routine. Yeah. But now I'm slowly back into that. So. Uh, uh, I even whenever I go for a vacation, if it is yeah, my yeah, home country, yeah. the hometown, mm -hmm. then uh, I try to visit the schools <laughs> or some nearby colleges. Yeah, okay, yeah. Uh, some of my friends are there, so uh, they always tell me, like, okay, if you come, then you know, uh, just motivate yeah, uh, yeah, kids, yeah, motivate important. students. Okay, so earlier also I gave a talk. Uh, this time also I went to yes. you know uh, a nearby college. Um, where I kind of uh, gave a popular level talk uh, mm -hmm. about you know quantum technologies nice, and it's nice. like how the theory and application they are kind of uh, bridging there. So the interestingly, uh, you know, that talk was attended by students from not only from physics but also from chemistry, mathematics, biotechnology, Wonderful. and the <laughs> teachers were even wider spectrum like. Faculties from history, political science, and Bengali also came to listen that, and they interacted me after wonderful, the talk. So, wonderful. which was kind of, I mean, it's an amazing, yeah. you know, experience, experience for me. Fantastic. Okay, and uh, I, I felt so moved that I told my friend that you know, next time if I'm coming, I'll again come yes. and probably you know talk about something else Fantastic. to motivate the students, you know, and especially uh, I am kind of you know. Becoming more uh, getting involved in this uh, outreach yeah. stuff in the school kids, yeah. okay, very, very because that is very important. important. It's extremely uh, no, important. If you want to really change the society, you have to change it from the primary, primary level, level. Exactly. okay. Otherwise, it's impossible. And they have enormous curiosity, okay. exactly. I was okay. just coming to that point. You know, there is so much interest in yes, science, yes, yes, because. It is one thing which will directly, you know, cater to the curiosity of any human being. Doesn't really take into any anything into consideration except the fact that you have to be interested. Yes, right? yes. that is amazing. Absolutely amazing. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, this thing I you know kind of I enjoyed uh, earlier and I'm still enjoying it. I'm actually trying to expand it a little bit Fantastic. more, Fantastic. especially the outreach part. Yeah. So I got a call from one of the like local newspaper in Bengal. Uh, they said Wonderful. that okay, we want a small write up from you, Fantastic. which which I committed him that okay, I will do it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, he just called me. He said okay, yeah, we are still waiting for that. <laughs> so I need to be more a little bit systematic and distribute my time yeah, on those yeah. things. Uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, so I told my you know friends who are in school or other colleges in various places. Mm. Okay, next time if I'm going, I'll keep few days just for that, and uh, you know, just to give talks uh, to motivate uh, you know, our kids. Interesting. You know, uh, and sometimes you know they will ask question which we you will never thought, thought that okay about. they can think from this direction, this direction, which is always very illuminating. Very illuminating, okay. very illuminating. Yeah. In fact, invariably in the process of giving a talk, you will also. <laughs> kind of get questions and clarifications which you would have not thought about. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, it has happened to me also uh, several times. It's, yeah. it's very interesting. Yeah, fascinating, Gatikur. I'm so glad and I'm very happy that uh, we had this kind of long conversation, which is uh, already two hours three minutes. Oh, I, I thought that I will talk for maybe forty minutes. <laughs> no, no, I didn't no. realize that we spent two hours. No, no, no. <laughs> that is the yeah. beauty about talking about yeah. science. And uh, I'm very thankful for your time and uh, your uh, thanks to you, Papanani. You're doing this initiative, which is you know really great. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. In fact, uh, thanks to people like you and you in this particular case, and uh, most of the people have been. In fact, everybody has been generous enough in, in sharing their knowledge and time. And since this is also part of emergence series, I'm hoping that uh, we will have you subsequently in a in a sure. In, I'll in, be more than happy. Uh, we can where we can go a little deeper into some of the concepts what you have been thinking about some very interesting questions you are addressing in your research and other things so thank you again for for your time okay thank you thank, thank you. you so this is pratidwani where we try to humanize science this time with an excellent experimentalist atikur raman